Entertainment. We we're, we're here for it. <laughs> I love how that's the that's the big <laughs> title for this series. Entertainment, please. And, and vibes. And vibes. And vibes. <laughs> how many times can the desk say vibes in five minutes? Uh, there's about thirty or forty. Yeah. Actually, jo know. Johnny, these last couple of weeks, he's like, I don't really care about the seating. If I'm being honest, I care about the vibes. Vibes, and, vibes. Honestly, vibes, the vibes, vibes have been immaculate lately. We had a great one Sounded with the like Florida a mayhem. Fourteen-year-old girl on Tumblr, bro. <laughs> All about those vibes, bro. <laughs> from 2004. You should see the way Johnny's looking at Jack right now. Johnny's lost it. He's going to kill me again. <laughs> yeah. What have I done? I've have you learned nothing? <laughs> That's okay. He's fine. He's, uh, we'll strap him into that chair so he can't escape. Right, let's get into the series, though. <laughs> Dark Toop into uh, New Junk City as well a little bit later on. I like the desk um, did end up leaning into the whole um, Hardy on the Reinhardt and maybe on the Arista and Junk Queen because I do think places like Antarctic Peninsula, New Junk City, these control and flashpoint game modes, you can get away with running something super aggressive and like something super speedy. And it does play into London's wheelhouse. And in their last series that we saw from them last weekend as well, they still want to play the Reinhardt. That's where their strengths are, but they are willing to move Hardy over to an Orissa if the map requires it. If they feel like they can't get away with the Reinhardt, they will play the Orissa. So having that flexibility is key, but right. you definitely want to stri stick, stick sorry, with what you're strong at, what your wheelhouse is. You don't want to have to move and conform to everyone else because at that point you're playing down to your strengths and into others. Let's have a look. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised to also see Hardy on the JQ. But JQ does still feel super rough um, against the Orissa. Obviously, you're not aiming for the Orissa as JQ at all. You're just kind of hoping and searching for the back line and just even just the DPS, right? You want to run people down. But it looks like Hardy's going to shout and switch. Okay, there you go. So Reinhardt with a Bastion with a May. Stay within the wheelhouse, but the Outlaws, yeah. they're going to see this one coming, right? They're playing some strengths of their own. they got Pelican on the Genji, Shu, or Shu on the Ana. They have some players on some very comfort things. And with London Spitfire not playing the Symmetra as well, they're not going to be able to close that distance with a Teleporter. So how are they going to be able to get onto this Houston Outlaws comp that has just a ton of damage and execution power with Pelican on the Genji as well. Things I love to see though, Violet on the Kiriko. Yeah. Uh, last series with Violet on Kiri was just permanently flanking. So, More than Hydron, which says a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah actually. So I wonder if Violet's going to treat us to the same thing. Pelican was in the back line there for a long time. He's just right-clicking Hardy to death. They're still not looking at him. And Hardy just can't do anything. He's at 18% ult charge so far in this round because he's just holding a shield hanging out, finding his moment where he can pin in and help his team. But against the Bastion, that's so much damage. Ant Matrix, great positioning with the wall from Backbone as well. And that's, that's really be nice. them getting the first capture with Fearless falling down. Yeah, super nice play there from London Spitfire. Just setting up with the window. You're going to take a lot of damage on the entry anyway, so you're expecting Landon to get those ultimates up pretty quickly. I mean, even Avril, too, is 91% towards a beat, Scott. Yeah, he, well, he's just standing there with his healing aura going around. Violet wins the 1v1 versus Backbow. Pelican gets nanoed. He doesn't have a blade, but this is just pushing out damage. Well, there's the pin. There's the TP. Don't oh. think it's going to be enough. Oh, oh, hello. <laughs> Goodbye, Pelican. Blow to pieces. Hardy goes down as well, so that will be no pressure left on the point. And that's the big linchpin of this composition too, right? If Hardy ends up falling, like what really do they have to anchor themselves on point, to just place them there to eke out some more percentage? It's really tough. Yeah. And you can, now that the Houston Outlaws have the point, Phyllis is going to be able to do exactly this. He's just going to be able to stand here. Phyllis sits. Just sit. Kitsune rush. Disengagement from London Spitfire. Yeah. Maybe a little bit too Oh, early. Pelican with a dash. He dashed into the wall. He tried to 180 dash to get away, but the wall was straight behind him. Couldn't get over in time. Got frozen. Got killed. He's a Bastion. However, ooh, speaking of Bastion, that is happy. Using that ultimate. A good window again. A very early one. London Spitfire throwing all support ultimates in this fight too to try and clean this up. London Spitfire on control. A force to be reckoned with. Yeah. And Hardy is continuing to exist as he's now at 65% ult charge, as he's offering almost absolutely nothing other than being a shield bot right now. Backbone goes over to the Sombra, which is an interesting choice. What do you think the reason for the Sombra is? I mean, maybe just hacking the Orisa, hacking the Genji, just hacking somebody in the front line. Oh my. Yeah, that's not great. Hardy going down that early. There's not much, there's not as much pressure on the Orisa anymore. I mean, sure, you can hack her, but. The May is surely better with the ice cools yeah. across the map, the Blizzard. We saw how much value he got the wall. with the Blizzard. Just, just the wall and the Bastion, right? There's so many great reasons to continue to play the May. I don't understand this uh, Sombra switch. 
Yeah. Are you going to be able to build up an EMP? Potentially. There isn't a shield that you need to worry about, so you're going to get free charge. But, but uh, even shooting an Orissa, if she fortifies, you're not getting that much ult charge. Right. You can spear spin in your direction. Mitigate a lot of that damage and charge rate that makes Sombra good. But in the most recent patch, there's a 15% ult charge oh. increase, and he's there's already fallen the about nano. it. Spark with a very late kill on the ultimate, though. Kills Violet. Probably on the flank somewhere. Not sure where he was in a different postal code. I would assume. Nano boost pushes London all the way back. Perkin didn't pull the blade, however. He's yep. now just hunting, searching for an opportunity to go in. Hardy has shadow. Oh, he's going to push it. Oh, well, no. Straight into the fall of Fighter Rissa. And he can't really do anything with this. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for a solo nice shadow. Yeah, shadow. Right Not a solo, Scott. It's a double. Hardy pops up the shield too, so his Pelican can't get healed. Violet can't get a Suzu or anything like that. Really nice stuff from London. And that gives more time for Backbone to get this EMP up. It honestly might end up coming up super clutch if you can get this EMP for this final fight. He's on 80% already, Scott. He's been farming there just in the intermission. But still, the, you could sooner rush. Blade, Terrace, so many and ultimates. Water, like, it's so many ultimates. Admiral Sound Barrier is the thing that they're going to need to just live through the amount of damage that's coming. But even then, it might not be enough. Here it is. Happy. Artillery strikes. Landon holding those EXO boots. Is it going to be quick dead. enough? Pelican's dead. Now no more blade. A hack onto Fearless, taking the additional damage and the Kitsuna rush on the point. Hardy still dancing around as that EMP has now been charged successfully. Good pull this one right away. I mean, you might as well. Jeez. Straight onto Happy. It's absolutely massive and violet. Turned into a one centimeter pancake. Nice little ultimate there from Fearless, but it does nothing more than just kill that lamp. Nana boosts two. The London Spitfire just running around the Outlaws right now. Pelican does make it back in time. And there's the blade. Oh, he's hacked and he's dead. London Spitfire shut down the Outlaws and take round one. I'm surprised that they ended up holding on all that time to give Backbone enough time to get the EMP, but they got there. EMP was big. EMP was huge. A lot of that time, too, was bought by the Bastion yeah. on the side of the London Spitfire. You, they killed Pelican so early. Happy was setting up with his ultimate. Wasn't able to just uh, give outwards pressure. Oh, here you go. Yeah, so just a kill onto Pelican. A huge. Oh, grenade. just a, a direct hit. <laughs> does with a the lot grenade. of damage. What's that? About 120 damage, I think, when the grenade Something actually absurd. sticks to you. So if you can hit those, as you said, Pelican just not expecting that amount of damage. And now we're going to see something from the Houston Outlaws we've seen in the past. They play this Ana Kiriko, but put Fearless on his signature Winston, a more traditional dive. How do the London Spitfire hold up to this? Wow, this is almost just the old meta. Yeah. Almost. We actually seen in the East, there's actually a lot of teams still playing the like 2022 playoffs meta, which is like <laughs> the Reaper Sojourn That's with crazy. the Kiriko. Like, it's, it's interesting seeing teams go back to that type of style. And that's kind of what Houston Outlaws are doing as well. But you can see they're just posturing for position. Houston don't want to be the ones to dive into a Bastion in wheels mode. I love the synchronization. I go to the Olympics for that kind of stuff, honestly. For so those TPs? No, but synchronization of the teleports. Oh. They all go through at the same time. For swimming? Well, well yeah, well, synchronization teleporting sure, is yeah. not in the Olympics. Uh, it could be. Yeah, it could yeah, be. But, when Overwatch becomes a reality, <laughs> we will have synchronized teleporting and London Spitfire Let's will take gold. Let's make Overwatch World Cup mode. <laughs> yeah, we'll take, London Spitfire will take the gold medal. Oh, Pelican in a little bit of trouble. Had to use the deflect there to stop Hardy getting damage in. And they get first go. cap. Get first cap. They land on Sparker, but no, all good. There's the lamp. And that, that shield doesn't last long either, so Phil is trying to make an incision into the London Spitfire Huge, pop is just so difficult. And there's the teleport to the high ground. And now they just change places. Wow, that, that was a great play. I really thought the Spitfire were going to be in trouble, but that teleporter just sort of changes everything. And once again, this is actually something that I saw in the last round. Shu is sort of throwing these nanos out to just sort of try and keep them in the fight, but they're not synchronizing them with other ultimates. They have Nanoblade coming up for the last fight. If they just accepted that this fight was probably over, they could Nanoblade in the next fight, and that would work extremely well against this composition the Spitfire are playing. But now Pelican has a naked blade. They probably have to peer, uh, pair it with an EMP to even find some value, which can be expensive and also completely mitigated by one sound barrier from Admiral. Even that wall too, if you save that wall for after the EMP, if you can get that off, it could be huge. Happy. They're going to bait them into the, point. the rest of his team. Okay, high ground now for the London Spit by EMP. He's absolutely huge. Five man EMP. Lamp comes down. Backbone's already dead though. But Phyllis ends up jumping in. 
and already you can see full HP across the board for the London Spitfire, and they are going in. The Outlaws are gonna now have to deal with this beat. Great play. There is a blade, and they do manage to isolate Lander, but Violet is now dead. Outlaws, luckily though, they do end up controlling the point for at least 20 plus percent, Scott. But these ultimates from the Outlaws, they're just a little bit disconjointed right now. Phyllis pops the primal rage. Hardy in trouble now, just trying to pin through. Only healer right now is Admiral. Okay, here's the big reset for the London Spitfire. Eventually, the Outlaws made it work, Scott, but it was an expensive fight. And you said it, Jack, that flip from the Houston Outlaws is huge because not only do they win that team fight, they're ticking up the entire time. So London Spitfire, they made their move. It was just a little bit too late and it just wasn't enough because of how big that EMP was from Happy. It, it was expensive, but Violet still has that Katsune rush. Yeah, this rush could be quite big, but again, just trying to get any picks is so hard. I mean, you're looking for a giant grenade, I guess, from Shu. The, there's the rush. London Spitfire just back off into the room, hold the shield, hold the door. They're gonna back up. Fair amount of damage there down by Pelican, just reflecting, but not but enough. Not enough. They, they, and that's a Katsune rush, that big tool that they have. Now Shu Nano is the other one that they have. Maybe Nano Fearless, Shu's about to drop a nade on the head of the London All right, Spitfire. there it is. Nano boost, oh my. Finish with Nano too. Just disappeared. Hack onto Sparker. There's the point flip, 83%. London Spitfire now rotating to high ground, using that teleporter again. They are still finding picks of the Houston Outlaws right now. They need to be careful of Violet. Violet is the best 1v1 character right now on this point. He can take so many fights. He has the Suzu, there it is. Into Suzu. Can Hardy get, yes, Hardy just pins in. Oh, I think that's a mistake. Oh yeah, Lamp, no, to save it. And he's almost back to full HP again. Wow. Now he just needs hold shield. I don't think he's got any actually, it doesn't matter, because Sparker and the rest of the team come back, clutch lap from Admiral to save that fight for them. And now we're in last fight territory, Scott. Utmost face from Hardy that the rest of his team would be there to back him up, support him. He lives just long enough and now they're in the driver's seat. Happy has that EMP, but Admiral with the sound barrier to match, they cannot get caught in the same way they did last time. And that's they're why they're going, they're going, they're going, going super early. And Shu's already dead. The EMP from Happy has to be, again, another five man you'd imagine. Here comes the bombardment, but the back line for the Outlaws is already dead. They're just clearing out the point with the ultimate. Fearless, oh, Fearless catches oh, he caught it in He actually just caught a mortar in midair, dies, and Happy still with the EMP. Pelican, no deflate, no dash, no cooldowns, and they might be able to get a touch in. Landon. Happy kills Landon. The EMP did come out and found two, but what more else can they follow up with? There's no healing now here for the London Spitfire, and the Houston Outlaws are just juggling perfectly. Pelly with the blade? Okay, he did find Sparker, he managed to earn himself a blade. Pelican with four kills in the fight, maybe five, two, there you go. All right, the fight's always winnable when you got Pelican. 85% in a miracle fight for the Houston Outlaws to keep him in it. Masterclass, just juggling the overtime, just keeping themselves in the fight long enough to get their other members back. And London Spitfire, now they're the ones who have to rush to the point. They do have landed with an amplification matrix soon that can put out a ton of damage. We saw Fearless disappear last time they dropped it. Got to time it well with the uh, wheels mode, Scott. They are touching the point. Oh, there's the nade. Oh, oh, there's the primal rage too, bumping out of the amplification matrix. And if I know Fearless, and oh boy, I do, he's going to find kills with it. Spark it down, a large source of their damage now gone, but Hardy pinning to the back line kills Pelican. And now desperation time for the London Spitfires. Only three people alive to try and touch the point. Admiral trying to dive in and out of the bubble to try and heal land, but Fearless with a perfectly placed. It just doesn't matter. And it's all going to go by the wayside now as the Houston Outlaws just cling on to life in that round and come up with a W. There are very few teams that win a round like that in the Overwatch League, and Houston Outlaws is one of them. Just individual brilliance. Clutch. So clutch, Pelican and Happy. Happy dropping the EMP, recognizing he didn't need to hit this big five man. EMP's landing and just takes him out. As soon as that healing is off the board, Outlaws, they can start to sort of take those 1v1s and close it out by the skin of their teeth, make it to a round three. Yeah, Pelican's huge blade there too. Just wins the neutral against Sparker. And then as soon as Sparker dies, they haven't really got much too much, too much damage, right? Yeah. I mean, I guess the Sim does a lot, but you have to charge up the beam. And it's really tough to get much done. All right, round number three. I'm going to touch him in Insula. Same kind of comp here, almost, from the Houston Outlaws. Now I'm just trying the Arisa though instead. Yeah, interesting that Fearless is on the Arisa, but Happy is going to stay on the Sombra. Maybe feeling like he was getting great value from it.
probably a lot of charging that he can do. Helps him sort of pair with Pelican to get hacks, executes. Oh, he's got boot off the edge there. TP's away. Oh, okay. They need to be just so careful. Shit. Like, you can see Shu, he's just so afraid of, this, oh, 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 of oh, oh. anyone running him down. He's trying to find value with these nades, and he's not going to get help from Violet, let's be honest. Violet is playing a DPS character at this point. It really is. Uh-oh, now Phil is in trouble. It's a lot of damage, but the Fortify was perfectly timed. So keep him up, Scott. They're just hurting them down. They need to find picks sooner rather than later, but Backbone's the one who finds it. Yeah. Because everybody's grouped around the BAP as well. Like, think of how much bursting there is, too, with the, uh, with the Batiste. You hit that shift, people are below half, like, boom, you're getting healed so quickly. You're really looking at burst damage um, if you're the Houston Outlaws to try and kill people, and they haven't really got too much of it. Oh, Felix is going over to the Doomfist. We saw him wow. play this against, I believe it was uh, the Vegas Eternal. Right. And he found so much value because the London, oh, sorry, the opposition just weren't able to find enough damage to take him out. The reason I'm worried about it in this specific pick is because he's going up against Sparker on the Bash, and if he finds himself in the wrong place at the wrong time, he's not going to have any help to deal with. Well, he's in, and he's out again. See instantly. Violet they pop that Will's mode. As soon as Fearless comes over the top there, Sparky just pops Will's mode and uh oh, great counter pin. Good counter pin. Does get a big slam, a huge slam, in fact, did a lot of damage with that nano boost on top. Hardy ends up falling, but that blizzard and the window should sustain them for now. Houston Atlas are putting pressure on point, but here oh, comes the beat. That was close to an Ajax, Scott. It was. But now two big ultimates are down, including that lamp. Nice sir. Nice wall, in fact, coming through from Backbone. Solving Pelican getting an instant dash reset onto somebody. They're pulling a lot of ultimates for the Houston Outlaws. However, importantly, Scott, going into this next fight, they are going to cap. They've got EMP, they've got the Doomfist ult, plus that Katsune Rush. This is where it gets difficult for the London Spitfire of when they're able to just stand around the point and sort of trade off of each other, it's easy. But as soon as all of a sudden you're the ones having to aggress without playing that Symmetra, right. you're walking into traps. They have the EMP, they have the Kitsune Rush. Doofus can go in and out at any moment because he has that insurance get out of jail free card with the ultimate as well. Oh, Abby was going to slip off the edge of the map. <laughs> <laughs> was, don't slip on the ice, Abby. Come on then. All right, EMP. Oh, that does suck. Uh oh, and, and he's, he's been found. found as well. Does he win? Does he win? 20 HP? No, of course not. And now they've got to go. Speed is the name of the game now. Meteor strike early from Felix as well. Violet gets caught. Wow. The Houston Outlaws just overstepping a little bit. The traps never got sprung, and they were the ones who ended up getting picked. And now London Spitfire didn't have to use a single ultimate to get into this fight. And they're at 85%, so they only need to win one more team fight. They got a shatter as well. It's going to be tough for Phyllis to get much done here. Yeah, Phyllis, as soon as he goes in, Hardy's going to look for the shatter. Batman coming to the rest of his team. They found Sparker. That would be happy. EMP available. There it is. Sparker instantly popping that shift. Healing 50 HP, but not enough. And even Lannan couldn't keep him up. That additional damage from being a hack target really paying off there for the Sombra. Phyllis is in, no shatter in his face. I mean, the London Spitfire, kind of happy with that. They know they don't have to expend ultimates. Just under 50% for the Outlaws. It's London Spitfire, going to put them in OT. Yeah, and then Backbone, he switched to the Sombra, but he hasn't been able to charge the EMP up fast enough yet again. Maybe he can make magic happen and London Spitfire can find right. picks like they did last time. And that's the big thing. I mean, you switch to Sombra quite late into the stage, right? You might not guaranteed a EMP. Especially with the 15% ult charge. Oh, uh, Backbone no. is... Wow, that was cheeky of Backbone there. You see him holding out the hand. He was ready and waiting for Pel uh, Happy to uncloak. Uncloak and, and then he can hack the hack uncloaking. Him, yeah. yeah, yeah. That would have been crazy if that happened. Chew is so far back right now. Doesn't want to show himself. <gasps> oh, what was oh, that? Wait. Did Violet get hacked out of his Katsune Rush? That's what it sounded like. Yeah, I think he did. Violet hacked out of Katsune by just a manual by Backbone. Huge play. That's a huge play. That is using that wall's missing. Unbelievably rare sight. Mod Strike comes in. She with fancy footwork there. Does manage to dodge out of it in time. Those grenades from Sparkle are just so good. Nano oh, Blade man. coming in. Hardy almost hit the pin too. Can Pelican come up with kills? He's already killed Landon. He's looking for Hardy. He's looking for more resets. Oh, he dodged just, it. He dodged, <laughs> he dodged it out of that one. But the rest of London is Spitfire. Just, <laughs> I mean, Katsune Rush or not, a Nano Blade that's going to do it. Houston Outlaws taking that first map. They got smiles across the ball by the looks of it, but that was very, very close.
I think the smiles because they know they got away with that one. There was there was some sketchy play from both sides, honestly. Ultimates not landing in the way that they wanted. Players getting picked. But London Spitfire just didn't feel like they were ever able to get value from the ultimates at the right. very end. Backbone didn't get that EMP. Hardy Shatter, he's held it for so long, but unable to find value like this. But I will say, you know, we came into this series, everyone expected Houston Outlaws really to come in. Maybe they would have fun with it. They're not having fun. They're actually playing seriously, and London Spitfire is pushing them the distance. Pushing them to the limit right now, yeah. I mean, I'm more interested right now seeing what Flashpoint's got uh, in store for us. These Pelican Blades, super clean this uh, game so far. All right, Houston Outlaws push to the brink. A uh, round number three, a 99 to 99 on all three stages, I believe, too. Uh, London Spitfire, they never, ever back down. They never give up. And that's sort of what the desk was saying, right? London Spitfire, they are a team that they're never afraid of anyone. Whoever their opponents, they have to just keep you know, going forward. Otherwise, they're going to falter. Midtown up next. Houston Outlaws have 1 0 up, but London Spitfire making this so competitive. We'll be right back just after this.
Houston Outlaws pushed to the brink there on Antarctic Peninsula, going all three rounds. But uh, that guy that's getting a whole lot of potassium right now, Pelican, his blades that map were a little ridiculous. Let's uh, bring up a stat card for you. Seven Dragon Blade kills. Pretty large when you're not always gifted the nano. There were a couple of times where it's just Naked Blade going in. A couple of times he did get nano boost, but big damage coming out from the Genji. And he, he struggled at times from the, the amount of damage coming out from London Spitfire, you know, and just the damage from the grenade from Sparker's Bastion. But the important thing to keep an eye on is the clutchness that Pelican brings into every team fight. Pelican isn't in this Houston Outlaws lineup. There's a chance that they don't ever win that second round and that map goes the other direction. So huge plays from Pelican and the Houston Outlaws to keep themselves in the map and close it out. I really like that about the Outlaws this season, Scott. It, they, they do seem to have just so many clutch players. Like Pelican, incredibly clutch. Fearless with Primal Blades, like incredibly clutch. Violet just being Shoe. Violet. Shoe landing ridiculous nays. There's so many small pieces to this Outlaws puzzle right now. Obviously, no surprise, of course, they are top three currently. 12 and 13 record, you're feeling great. All right, Midtown, what have you got for us? It's easy to forget how much of a super team Houston Outlaws is as Seriously. well, right? Like, you know, when they acquired Fearless, and Shu, two of the best players on their respective teams at top end teams, they came together. We were expecting big things and I think it's easy to forget this team is 12 and three, potentially going into 13 and three regular season. This is a very solid team that in the right meta could hit ridiculous peaks. Yeah, and championship winners on their squad too. Yeah, can't forget that. All right, defense for the Houston Outlaws first up. Just going, what they've been running with recently, which is no Alari at all, just going Ana, Kiriko and then uh, Putting Pelican back on the Genji. This is, well, Outlaws are the only team playing this composition, this Ana Kiriko. No one else is really playing that. Most teams are playing Lucio Baptiste or Alari Baptiste, but I think it's almost just playing to their strengths and playing something that people don't know how to deal with. Shu, obviously a world-class Ana, potentially one of the best in the world, and Violet's playing this flanking Kiriko that's just always putting out pressure that you have to deal with. So Houston Outlaws playing in a slightly unconventional way, but playing to their strengths in a similar way to how London Spitfire do it with the Reinhardt. Right. Big rotations from London Spitfire, just taking the alleyway. Now straight onto the point. Ooh, Ooh. Admiral. Oh dear, yeah, Admiral got hit with a nade there. Oh, and uh, speaking of nades, big body grenade, forcing out the lamp from Landon. They can cower in this room for a brief moment, Scott. Brief bit of respite for them. They got one tick, like that's no joke. You can see Violet likes to assist Pelican on this flank so they can heal each other and they can work together, make themselves both more of a threat, but it's almost impossible to punish a Genji and a Kiriko. Pelican is one, there's the window. Oh my God. Are they just gonna be able to get this point? I mean, this window might be a little bit too much. Grenade through it, tried to get a tag on to shoot. Dun oh yes, no. Phil is just navigating around that lamppost and quite get the touch in there, Scott. So, you know what? Take those. Oh, goodbye, Violet. This is an adaptation that we've actually seen London Spitfire make over the last week. In their last series, they played Sparkle on like the flanking soldier and it didn't have that much success or they were playing the Symmetra. They've actually gone in a different direction with the Reinhardt where they've now made themselves a threat and Spark is on the Bastion, so he has more damage that the Outlaws, they just don't seem to be able to deal with as once again, Pelican falls first. Where did Pelican go? Must have got hit with a body shot from the May High School, of course, and then something else. Just Pelican, I think he only peaked his head off for half a second. Feel us back on the Doofus is well worth noting. It worked for them in uh, on Antarctic Peninsula. Shoe there. Braver than I. Against the backbone, right clicks from the May. Nanoblade coming up. That's the first half of the second point as well already, Jack. They, they took positioning early, they got that pick, and now this card is moving at a rapid rate. Happy uses the Bastion ult. I mean, they're all That's in a small dangerous. room. No, oh, okay. No, almost no damage taken from the London Spitfire. I mean, that must have been Hardy just holding the shield up to the sky, you know? Yeah, maybe. Or, or you know, maybe the staggering of it. Admiral just recognizing where he needed to be at the right times. There's the window again. So much Their win condition from their last points. That was close. Violet almost gets evaporated. But here comes the blizzards. So no one can touch them on the point right now. Hardy with a... Uh, a foe charge, just uh, charged in halfway, and then their backs all the way up. Happy dead. Here comes the beat. Apple, nano blade. And Nano Blade's been popped straight into the wall there again. Oh. He gets booped. He's got a dash. He needs to clear the distance. He's trying to find people, but no. What a perfect overlay of uh, abilities there. A wall into a boot, and that Nano Blade just absolutely dominated by the London Spitfire. 
Fearless up in the skies of the Doomfist, but here comes the wheels mode again. Fearless punching into his demise. And around the point right now is Vilo playing, but the problem is the London Spitfire been moving this cart the whole time, and no kills have been found. I mean, at least they got backbone, sure, but that point's been unlocked. Four minutes and 45 seconds. And Houston Outlaws just can't find picks. They're in this fight, they're trading aggro really well, but no one on London Spitfire is falling and they're just sustaining that little bit longer and they are moving at a quick rate right now on Midtown. Happy goes over to the Sombra. Right now, what the Outlaws are doing is not working against the rush from the Spitfire. His May switch is uh, crazy, actually, to me. I think yeah, Backbone got, yeah, you, we just talked about how much value yeah. he's getting on the May, and then he's going to switch over to the Sombra. I mean, who are you going to wall, right? Kind of makes sense, but I guess you're doing a lot of damage, but you can hack the Doom. I think that's the biggest thing here is probably the reason. you're not playing against the Orisa anymore, you are playing against Doomfist. If Doomfist goes in, you hold out the right click, yeah. and well, Sombra does one thing pretty well, and that's shut down Heroes with high mobility. Yeah, that's a, that's a good shout out. It's definitely against the Doomfist of Fearless, and this is why you. Oh, there you it. go. Fearless is going crazy. Happened just there, but unfortunately, Fearless has already killed two in that fight, so. Are you dead? Okay, finally, some stabilization here for the Outlaws. But London's Spitfire, they, they have so much time that they can cycle their ultimates. They can wait for the backbone EMP. They can, you know, use their ultimates reactively to the Outlaws because this is one of the problems with playing this Outlaws composition. The onus is really on them to do something. London's Spitfire can just stand around and their chances of finding a pick are higher, but they're walking into an EMP. EMP. Yeah, does Admiral know? Does he know? Shooting Violet and Phyllis are already pretty low. Admiral is right in the sides of Happy right now, but the team's already dead. Too slow. The window has been shattered though, but it doesn't matter. No, landing. Instantly put the lamp down, hit the shift as soon as that hack worn away. Violet and Shu died before that fight even began. And that's sort of what I meant by the onus is on the Outlaws. They need to play faster, they need to go because eventually Spitfire will find the picks. Exactly. And they're around in the final corner with almost three minutes. Don't worry. Okay, yeah. Everything can be solved with a nano. Oh, oh, defend yourself with, <laughs> defend yourself with the ball strike. Oh, he's doing a good job for it so far. But no, Pelican is far too strong. He only found one. Tart's moving in, Violet's down. I mean, Violet, yeah, wait, Violet's dead. Pelican has got deflect still. They need to kill Sparker. Okay, him and Happy. They do execute him, but Pelican with the half HP. Doesn't have fall him. Shouldn't matter though. The spawns are way too close, and it is only Admiral. Yeah. Backbone EMP. That was close. I think it went by the wayside. I don't know if it came out in that last round or where exactly when it came out, but just wasn't enough. It didn't Two win minutes. the fight. Yeah. They, they still got time. They still have time. That was an expensive fight for the Outlaws to win. It cost them the Nanoblade. Fortunately for them, Violet is still holding on to this Katsune Rush. The only thing they need to fear is the Hardy Earth Shatter. Oh my god, where is he going? Um, I don't think even Hardy knows, to be honest. Oh, he's back. It's fine. Katsune Rush on the high ground for Violet. No only, one can use that, yeah, really, other than him. himself. Yes. I mean, he really is him sometimes, but it's only uh, the, the Kunai is really that's doing much. Got you. Shoot. Ends up going down to a fire strike after getting Ooh, hit by the Shadow. A nice pin from Hardy. Just taking this one to his own hands. And there goes Happy, too. I mean, they're just getting slowly whittled down. That should be the cap. Shu might be able to get back. Nah, there's no way, actually. One minute and 30 seconds. All right. Big time bank whittled down. But Scott, honestly, London Spitfire finishing with time on the bank on Midtown is yeah, a, sight to, a sight to behold. Yeah, with a minute and a half as well. It's a hard map to capture, and they have a minute so that if we do go into overtime, Outlaws are going to need to finish with time of their own. And I want to really highlight the Violet Kiriko because it feels like on control it makes more sense because you can play these flanky off angles. But... So far in Midtown, it doesn't feel like he's been able to find the same level of value. And at that final fight, that Kitsune rush just was almost selfish in a way of that, or maybe he thought the rest of his team would be able to dive in with it, but they didn't get anything. And for that reason, London Spitfire just walked their way to a victory. Yeah. I mean, you rely on what? The Kunai is getting a double headshot there, like onto the Bastion or onto someone else. Like, it's really, it's really rough when no one else can use that Kitsune rush. And there's a lot of people that benefit from that as well. Like, Sombra charges, does a lot of damage. Well, everybody does a lot of damage in Kasune Rush, but Genji gets his resets quicker. Doomfist, who recently had a buff, lowering his cooldowns, gets his resets quicker, right? So, well, not resets, just uh, CDs. Even but, the movement speed is just so yeah, nice being so in a nice. Kasune Rush. It really just enables you to do other things. I'm curious if we are going to see a swap out of here. 
from Outlaws. I don't... The Zenyatta so. could make sense, especially if they're not playing a Symmetra, because all of a sudden you have that Discord Orb that is just going to be such a threat and you can break the shields, but I wouldn't be surprised, yeah, to just see him switch back to the Kiri. Back Kiriko. to Kiri. All right. Happy staying on this Sombra as well. They're really confident in this composition. See if it works better here on attack. Got I think it. they're able to dictate the flow a little bit better on attack, Boy. but it's still going to be difficult. It is, it is. Got to Violet to maybe find a flank again. What? There he is. There he goes. <laughs> there is the flank. Just teleported through a wall. Yeah. Hang on a second. <laughs> who, who did he teleport to? Who is he with? Is it the Genji or Pelican? Uh, it's probably Happy, right? Yeah, oh, that's true. It's probably Happy on the Sombra. But you can see London's fifth fight. They don't want to stand around. They want to keep putting on this pressure onto the front line of the Outlaws. They're getting herded into a corner. There's Pelican. Nice oh, nade. nade. Can they do much though? Oh my god, Pelican got rolled. So much damage. Backbone is dead though, Scott. And a, a rotation for the Outlaws does put them on the point, puts pressure on London Spitfire, just trying to stop that cap. Speaking of which, there's a tick. Sparker in trouble. Got wheels mode in three seconds, but that window is oh, going to so dissuade worried. Fearless from marching forward. Shoot. Oh, good oh, sleep. Such clutch a clutch master. Sleep. Backbone still gets him, so that's a big part of healing. And now all the healing for the Outlaws is gone just too much damage eventually and running into the same issue outlaws are finding windows into these fights it just doesn't feel like they have the damage to actually close them out right unless they have a nano blade and pelican can kill everyone or happy hits a big emp just feels like they're all doing a little bit of chip damage but not able to finally bring anyone and that's honestly a testament to how strong and how coordinated the spitfire rush is happy looking around there making sure no one's gonna be able to spot his teleport Good nade again! Woo. No one does it like Shu, that's all I'm saying. Pelican with three kills. Get him more! Yeah, that, that's what they need, right? Maybe if you hit Shu, hits those big anti-nades, that's absolutely a window in which they can get in. Cost them two minutes though, and they're against the clock. That's an important thing to remember for the Houston Outlaws. They need to finish with at least Look a at little bit of time. Oh, it lined up perfectly. Nano boost, one dash, two kills. That's a nade, and then a punch by Fearless, and then a follow through by Pelican. That's the coordination the Outlaws need. Now they have the EMP to follow it up. Oh, uh, Violet just TP. Okay, a distraction technique, in fact. Violet TPing right in front of the team, so Pelican can just clean house. And that was even great recognition from Happy. Just the individual hack on the Admiral so that when Pelican pulls the blade, they're not going to have the sound barrier. So now they hold on to the EMP, and that's the blade. So Pelican can start charging up another blade. Happy can use the EMP for the next fight. That's how you get things snowballing. So, EMP rush. With the Meteor Strike as well to get out of jail free card. Oh, oh, oh my nade too. Nade to EMP. Uh oh, London. Yeah, this is this is where it starts looking ugly, and this is what Jake said. London Spitfire, if you are, you can't be dissuaded. You need to keep just ramming your head into the Houston Outlaws. They don't have an EMP. They don't have a blade. This has to be the window in which you can hold on the second point. They have so many ultimates in the bank. They get a touch. Uh oh, Shu is in a whole world of danger. Oh. Jump straight down into that one. No, still healed up. The shot of Admiral down with the sound barrier. Admiral down. I mean, that's not great if you're London Spitfire. I'm going to tell you, not once, but twice. It's not great. Landon oh, is going to be able to play around this Blizzard now. Yeah, heal up the rest of the team. Hopefully wait for people to come back. Admiral is, yep, join the fight again. That window was clutch from Landon there. Admiral's dead. <laughs> oh my, Admiral's dead again. All right. He did his job. He got his one, goes back to the spawn door. They don't need the sound barrier. So honestly, almost fortunate that they hold on to that one. And now that those ultimates that we were saying were so important for the Outlaws, they only have the nano boost. And this is difficult. They have to get all the way to the end of the second point. This is where you don't want to be stopped. It's always nice when you uh, accidentally die as Lucio, and then it's like, actually, that was the best play I could make. Because <laughs> now I have sound barrier. Exactly as I intended. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I planned it all out. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's got an Ana boost. I think it's going to be on Fearless or Pelican to fight. Yes, there it is. It's on to Fearless. Misses the, just the short range punch and already under half HP. You can see Spartan just kind of looking at him. Oh, not quite looking at him. Quick enough by the looks of it. Spartan does fall, and there's the sound barrier from Admiral. Perfectly timed as well. Yep. They, that, it just stops anything the feelers could have gotten done. They then trade back onto Violet. Yes, you're not going to have it in the future for this EMP and this blade coming up, but you got to win the fights ahead of you.
Heading into another situation where we could get a blizzard cancelled by the EMP. Yeah. That's true. Interesting. Intriguing. It's it's a it's an interaction we haven't seen much of ever since it came into the uh, into the game because you don't see People many maze versus it. sombras. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. You just don't see that uh, too often. Dude, right. Violet is just such. <laughs> he's such a so annoying to yeah, deal with. He is extremely annoying to deal with. Good EMP. EMP. Yeah. Hit Sparker. A uh, blizzard not cancelled. It's actually Sparker's health bar. That is. Woo. Oh, okay. <laughs> he just. Random right click, thrown in. Meteor strike on top, though. So Landon. Backbone Blizzard, he's the only one alive, now. though. Yeah, is he going to be able to stay up? No. Probably not. No, everybody was, no one was frozen there. But still, it's got two and a half minutes for the Houston Owls. Very capable right now. Capable with time. Different story. That's that's really where the Outlaws need to sort of focus on. They need to finish with at least a second, just any time on the board so they get another chance to attack. They have the blade. They almost have nano blade, actually. Right. We've seen how extreme Pelican's value he can get from that eye ultimate. He can win it on his own. Admiral doesn't have the sound barrier to match it. They want to get as much push as they can and then drop the nano blade. Well, space is being granted to them, Scott. Shoot in trouble. Nay, onto Ooh. backbone. Did end up missing, and now he's just shooting the target. Do not peek again. Oh, you saw him go for that jump. Yeah, he thought jump about peak. it. He thought about it. He wants to get this turret down. He's one of the few people that can actually get it. Yeah. yeah. Well, don't worry. Backbone's on the case. He's got the hammer. It's Hardy puts to sleep. Hacked. Lambs, though, by Landon. Oh, that CC. Here comes the Nano. Stops. Nano, Blade. He's waiting for Landon. Oh, a slash and a dash. Perfectly timed. There goes Hardy, too. This is the fight ender. Potentially the map winner, too, if they can get this payload in with time. London Spitfire do a great job. They recognize they're losing the fight and just everybody throws their body at the point. We'll ensure that they will get another fight. If Admiral can get up to this sound barrier, it might give them enough time. But on the other hand, EMP, happy EMP, EMP. 10% away. Here comes the mortar strike. This should Straight be good. on top of Shu. One, two. Oh, he's so good. Was there any even hit markers? I don't think so. Admiral 5% away. Happy, same. They're tying up right Violet now. Violet's down. already dead. Violet down, not good. Houston Outlaws in final fight territory as both Admiral and Happy just bump into each other. And now both these big ultimates are up, Scott. Now is the dance of death. Admiral and Happy, the CMP versus the Sound Barrier. But not only that, let's go back to what we were talking about, time. Yes, they get another fight, but they need to finish in the next 30 seconds. Otherwise, they won't get another attack. Payload's a fair distance away too. So what's yeah. that, an extra 10 seconds off the clock just to how far the payload has been pushed back? Admiral's waiting in the wings. He knows this EMP's coming. There we go. Oh, he got hacked. Admiral peaks. But it doesn't matter. Landon hit the lamp. The beat comes in. All right. They're going to be able to sustain. Phyllis drops the Meteor Strike. His backbone just holding down the fort with the Molten Core. He might not have his little turret, but he's got that river gun. And he's just rolling. He using that Where's he going? Far. I don't know. I don't know, Scott. I'm going to be honest. Phyllis and Hardy end up going down. So now it's a fair fight. But the turret ends up falling. Backbone doesn't use Molten Core, but overtime is here. The rush on the point, Sparker needs to die, but no, it's actually the lamp's gonna save him and Hardy is back in the fight. Pelican with the nano boost with a perfectly ranged dash and melee kills Landon. Good Ooh. resets here coming from Pelican. Hardy with the 360 shield, trying to stop that damage coming in. Houston Outlaws managed to cap, but with no time in the bank. Hardy getting a little overzealous there, pinning into the small room of the Houston Outlaws, gets punished for it. That really opens the door for the Outlaws to slowly whittle down that fight. But now they're in the driver's seat. Outlaws need to do something to stop the London Spitfire. Let's remember back to the first London Spitfire attack, the way that they played, that they went all the way around the left alleyway, walk into the room, and then that allows them to juggle back and forth into the small room right. with the Reinhardt and the Bastion. This is hard for the Outlaws because they can't give up a single tick. So that means that they're going to need to take fights earlier than when that juggling starts, because otherwise it's going to be too easy for them to lose the fight because people are going to have to keep touching the point. I mean, London Spitfire, they're just so drilled in like how to play the Sim with the May, with the Rhine. They know where to play, they know when to go. And like you said, that single tick is really all the difference. Because London on their first rotation, Scott, they got two ticks. Yeah. And then the Houston Outlaws stepped in because yeah. they knew they could get a big nade from Shu. They could follow up with Pelican dashing in with Fearless, etc. But they don't have that luxury now. Yeah, no luxury of time. They're not going to be able to wait for that big cooldown to hit, wait for an ultimate, any of it, those types of things. They're going to need to be able to deal with it. Right. Might be one of the reasons you see Backbone on May 
just circumvent any of this aggression or sort of circumvent the choke. All right, there we go. Are we going to see anything different? Actually, you can see where Shu is uh, posted up. He's actually up there on the top left. Keep an eye on that. Waiting. That's the nade they're going to need. Right, waiting for the nade. But are they actually going to go he there? They're it. ready. Nade comes in. Only hits two. Landon and Spark have got anti. And Fearless is already in. Not a enough. big pin. And they shoot him as well. So it's an insta kill. You can see the look of disappointment on Fearless's face. He knows he, he knows he made a mistake. The London Spitfire only need one tick. And oh, it's one pixel, I should say. <laughs> Pelican's still laughing. <laughs> of course, this match at the very end of the day, Scott. Still gonna affect the standings all too much, but still a big W there from London Spitfire. Fears looking disappointed. Pelican still happy as ever. They knew the odds that they were going up against. The way that they like to play the game is not good at winning one team fight. It's good at building up ultimates, cycling those, and then finding the individual value. While London, if they made it to the point exactly like they did, it's over for them. So great play from the London Spitfire, showing there is merit to playing this Reinhardt composition. And they play it so expertly in a way that no team is ever prepared for. So Houston Outlaws just not coming up with the solutions right now. The Doomfist getting mixed value. I feel like sometimes it's really strong and he's punching around, he's being disruptive, but sometimes he's just getting caught by the sheer amount of damage coming out. Oh. It's always a treat to see some top level Genji play. At least we're getting treated to that today. These CPs too, really nice. Oh, here you go. Yeah, yeah. there's the pin. Good luck, Fearless. <laughs> yeah. I think as soon as that nade landed and there wasn't instant value, Boom. it was over. And yeah, I think exactly. almost they should have doubled down in knowing that TP was coming right. and just put everybody in that room. If they didn't go that room, well, damn, we lost. But, <laughs> you know, it just wasn't enough. All right, New Junk City up next. The Spitfire kind of map. We're going to see Ryan. We're going to see Lucio. But what do Outlaws have to bring to the table? We'll have to wait and find out after the break.
Welcome back. London Spitfire taking Midtown, Scott. That was a pretty fun map, I'm not going to lie. It was fun um, seeing Jake's little tweet there at the very end, like, we need to talk outlaws. We need to talk about yeah. something. <laughs> Jake's not mad. He's disappointed. He's just, exactly. <laughs> He's just disappointed. <laughs> Dude, this is why Jake always says, no fun allowed, yeah. you execute the enemies. Only win. Only win, no fun, only win. Yeah, and that's why we're all here for the vibes of the London Spitfire. Look at Hardy. Look at him. He's doing the vibes. Sparkers' vibes are high. And honestly, they're having fun. They're playing their game. And right. If, if you're a team, just like we talked about the Toronto Defiant, if you're a team in the play-ins looking at London Spitfire, this is a team that you need to be careful of because they can just throw these kind of compositions that you might not know how to deal with. And now that they've added Sparkers Bastion to the wheelhouse, is sort of throwing this high damage change into the setup, it can be difficult to deal with because maybe London Spit, uh, sorry, Houston Outlaws came in being like, oh, we'll play the Doomfist and we'll do that kind of stuff. And if they teleport around us with Symmetra, we'll just follow them. But they're not playing Symmetra. They're just playing Bastion and just killing everyone who tries to set up any flanks. So yeah. London Spitfire showing different iterations of the same composition and it's throwing the Houston Outlaws through a loop. I mean, they're shutting down one of the best tanks in the world right now, in Fearless. Yeah. It's been so hard for him to get anything done. That, I mean, they lost that final checkpoint, right? Fearless jumps in, made a small mistake. London with a Bastion, nade onto Fearless, and then Hardy with a pin, killed him, and that was that. New Junk City, though. Oh, the music is rather clean for this map, I will say. This is exactly like Australia. Yeah. You want to come to Australia? It's just, just like this. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just uh, just a soundtrack of random, like, metal or, like, uh, rock music in the yeah. background permanently. You've seen Mad Max, right? It, that's exact. That's my, Australia. My hometown. My hometown. <laughs> Me? Yeah, we live in Mad Bucks world. <laughs> no, well, no, because it's on the other side of the world. Furthest, well, isn't it one of the furthest continents or, like, countries away from, like, uh, any other country? Yeah, it's, it's the definition of an island, an island in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, man. It's crazy. That's some of the most beautiful wildlife, so. Oh, it's a great country. But. Let's talk about this point. We're going to see the Houston Outlaws. They're going to play a rush of their own, so we're going to see somewhat similar compositions. Backbone's going to stay on this Sombra, maybe not expecting this mirror. Only major difference is Fearless on the Orisa, Hardy on the Reinhardt. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about the Sombra. In fact, I did see a tweet in the break as well on the little lower third. It was like, uh, you know you know the Sombra meta, it's over, guys. <laughs> yeah. It's over. lied to us. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're going to see both teams just sort of going back, jostling for position. Because Backbone's on the Sombra, he's going to be actually on the point and get the first capture, but the damage coming out. Oh, they survive only just. Capital on the Spitfire. Now it's all golden. Well, unfortunately not for Hardy. More like a silver place trophy after that first death. Unfortunately for the Spitfire, although they do cap first, it looks like a very quick finish to their cap. Wait, London Spitfire say that, they, they Yeah, they commit their window straight on top of Outlaws' as one. I mean, Outlaws still need to cap here. Are they going to be able to push in and actually stall this one out? It looks like Backbone's going to at least be able to touch for half a second. No. Okay, cap ends up going through as Backbone dies. Yeah, it's really bad that Backbone actually fell. He was just trying to hold the point for the rest of his team. So no, now, good luck to Slodge and Hattie, though. Yeah, but at, at the end of the day, all of a sudden, Houston Outlaws, they're now at a 4v5. All right, here comes the, the reflip of the reflip. The strike. Straight on top of Landon. Here's the XO boots. People have gotten so good at dodging that. It's almost like it's not even worth right now to go for the Baptiste. A lot of ultimates invested by the Houston Outlaws. They've got to come up with something. And something they do. And that's something gets hardy. Oh, wow. Not expecting that much damage, though. Spark is accuracy. Oh, the bash is just so clean. Here comes the reflip of the reflip of the reflip. And London Spitfire take control once again. And with how quick this ticks up, they can find Pelican. This could potentially mean the first point going. Oh, hit one more right oh. And they get him. And honestly, that's the second time in a row that Houston Outlaws felt like they've had an advantage and just over aggressed into the Spark of Bastion. And he just lives long enough to find the picks. They can touch here. They're yeah, walking into an EMP, though, Scott. Yeah, at what cost? Ooh, there's Phyllis on the point. At what cost, indeed? EMP, a solo one onto Happy. He doesn't instantly die. He eventually ends up falling over after they kill the lamb. Here comes Fearless, though. Oh, a nice little uh, translocate there. Straight out to that Terra Surge. Here comes the window. Late lamp again. Sorry, yep. window again. They're trying to just hold on, get through the damage. Oh, shoot! He ends up going down. Sparkle with the damage through the window. Another flip, Scott, and another reflip, I think. Oh, we're in a pancake house at this point without flips that are going on. 99% to 75. London coming out with yet another 
There we go. All right, who's touching this time? Vilish or 2 HP? I don't think it's happening, Chief. Land and fall, so the healing is low for the London Spitfire, but I don't think it's going to matter. They're going to get the first cap. And My word. History repeats itself for a third time. They try and rush down Sparker. And the unsung hero of all of these flips is Landon on the Baptiste. He is just keeping Sparker alive for so long. Confidence in his teammate to drop those amplification matrices. And that's going to be the first round of London Spitfire. It has to be infuriating for the Outlaws not able to get any of those caps. All right. Uh, I, that has got to be the record for the amount of uh, flips. Sure. Yeah. Surely. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> nothing, just like, one. nothing like Hardy just shattering in front of your entire team. They got his one, like you said. They're just going to hide away from that window too. They don't need to peek. Now all of a sudden, once again, shoot London Spitfire. They have control of the point. Oh, there's the sound barrier in response to Sparkers' wheel smoke. Gets saved though by the lap again. God, this backline from London Spitfire. It's just unbelievable. Keeping Sparker up at the brink of death. They pull him up. The javelin from Phyllis almost saved oh, Sparker. It's decent, it's a decent kill, Scott. Happy's back on the bastion of his own. Ooh. Good duel by Landon. He does win it. No flip, or the, no cap even, I should say. Yeah, both teams just sort of almost team deathmatch just fighting around this point. But, oh, great <laughs> EMP. Great EMP. It's three people with Backbone and Landon going to clean up. It really is TDM. It, it is. We have entered Call of Duty Overwatch Edition. And it really feels like the London Spitfire. They love to play this chaotic style. They're dragging the Houston Outlaws to play their game, and they're coming out on top time and time again. Pelican switches over to the Genji, feeling like he needs a little bit more punching power, at least individually, to start closing out. They need to find a way to deal with Landon. Landon is just living for so long and keeping everyone else alive. they got to hit the focus. Hardy just uh, squaring up. Look how scared they are. No, not today. Oh, here comes the artillery barrage. No, no one gets hit. And here comes the reverse one. All right, what you got? There's one. There's two. Leviathan dies. Just so aggressive. He's completely on his own. Gets hacked by Backbone, taken out. And now all of a sudden, Houston Outlaws are in a really bad fight. 60% and counting. Terror Once surge. again, they might stagger to a second point here for the London Spitfire. Look like Pelican was trying to show. Oh! Nice 180 grenade there from Happy. Terror Surge, Sound Barrier, and London Spitfire are going to walk away with this one, you uh, you have to imagine. Yolo pin from Hardy. He's almost got the Shatter too. Oh, almost faced uh, his Maker there. Diving straight into a Wheels Mode Happy. They through the window did an unbelievable amount of damage, and Happy just trying to stay up. They are going to be able to... No, they're not no going to be able to get a touch. Fearless, you saw him jumping over the high ground, couldn't quite tag the point in time, and here comes Hardy. <laughs> or maybe a little bit too aggressive. Obviously going into it's the whatever though, Scott, right? Yeah. 30 seconds until the point unlocks? Uh, sure, uh, kill us, that's fine. If you team wipe us here, we're going to get a reset as five. We're going to go again. Yeah. And Fearless goes back over to the Doomfist, really not liking the Orisa. It feels like he's unable to offer anything. So they're slowly trending back to the composition that they previously played. Now Pelican's the one on the Sombra. London Spitfire, they just really have a great grasp of how they want to play this composition on this map. Oh my god, have they found uh, Shoe? Oh, no, that not was quite. Close. Nice counter pin. They want to fearless. us. There's the shadow through the. Oh, almost hit the Ajax too. Violet had to have been frames away from Ajaxing that. Double grenade kill from Happy. Love to see it. Jeez, that was a miracle. Fearless survived that, and that was a miracle. Violet too. Managed he, to get that beat off. That beat was, yeah, as you said, a couple of frames from being very, very bad because if that sound barrier doesn't go off, the swing is dangerous. You just, you just all die. Both teams with EMPs, they're posturing for positioning. You see Pelican and Backbone really playing these off angles, pinging out the opponents. Who's going to go first? Ooh. They're on the small room. Perfect EMP territory. Yeah, there you go. All righty. Uh, it comes out later from Backbone, and the damage was already done by the Outlaws. One he wishes he had back. Yeah, Feels like well. Outlaw's firmly in control at this point. Yeah, I wonder if London... Oh, nice chance to get a kill. Oh, he found, oh, him. He found him too. Wow, random spray and pray. Uh-oh. Well, Batman said. And that is sure. the point. Absolutely. I don't know, man. I guess if anyone's going to go for it, it's going to be Hardy. It's London Spitfire and it's going to be Hardy. That is for sure. 5% away. There's no okay. point. Yeah. Right, yeah. The thing is better. All right, all right. All right, mad respect, though, for even posturing to go for that one. Oh, Point actually, oh Scott, Point actually spawns behind the Houston Outlaws. So they're going to be able to rotate super fast. 
Wow. Interestingly enough, though, neither team seems very interested in fighting off of the points. They're not trying to cut each other off. They're not trying to use these ultimates. They're more than happy just to take a toe-to-toe -to -toe fight. Outlaws firmly in position for this duck point. Bad Bone just hanging around on the point. And this is a high ground. Like, if you're hardy, you don't have a Symmetra to teleport you up here. How do you, how do you get anywhere? Just like any good Reinhardt does score. You hit shift. And then don't forget you can cancel it. <laughs> oh no, Spark oh. punched into the wall. Lamb saves him. Yes, it does. Fearless looking out for Sparker on that one. Yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> I got your cheat. I got your back. Uh, come on. I mean, if I were uh, happy there, I'd be a little bit mad. All good. Sandbarra came out from the Spitfire. As the Meteor Strike is back, but ends up falling. Now to Pelican. Now Hardy is pretty low. Misses no partial punch. punch needed. Yeah, he just swung right past Hardy. Little Ogle missed a guaranteed kill. And with Shu and Happy dead, Fearless is going to come up, have to come up with a, a yet another miracle. Holds the power block in, but doesn't get the charge up punch. And that punch actually just cost him there. Hardy didn't fall, and he was able to protect Sparker. Yeah, if he hits that punch on Sparker, one of those kills doesn't come through. And from everything, things could have trickled down and snowballed for the Houston Outlaws. But Pelican has charged up a very quick EMP in comparison to Backbone. I wonder if the Outlaws are expecting this one to come. Mm, Sorry, the London Spitfire. Spitfire. Yeah, maybe not. High ground and like Hardy is kind of split right now. Just kind of where you want to play. That EMP is just too juicy not to go for. But Hardy just pinned straight back in and they just no just smush it. Yeah, like, he did put one down. That was for certain. Oh shit! What? Shoot! Hello? Okay, he's dead. Uh, well, Admiral has also fallen, so that's kind of rough for London. Late beat. Late beat from the Houston Outlaws. It's a 3v3 right now, but I mean, the London Spitfire, they are just so low. Point flip comes through. Great and now Backburn is the EMP. So they could very well win it off this EMP, Scott. This whole map. Yeah, London Spitfire, they just have so many ultimates in their war chest. So many options of how they want to take this fight because Outlaws don't really have anything at all. So you can EMP into Bastion Old, into Earth Shatter. There's so many options. If you're the Outlaws, you don't want to get into a fight where you can allow London Spitfire to play their game. Maybe catch them off guard. That's why Pelican's pinging everyone out. Choose switch over to Kiriko too. EMP available from Backbone. Hack onto Admiral. It's a manual one. Oh, no. Hello. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> little buddy hop over there with the trans okay. All right, not something you usually see every day. So now 56% and okay. counting. Shoot, so low. Hardy can't get to the high ground, so he's just trying to apply point pressure. Railgun is going to stop Hardy in his tracks, I got to imagine. Yes, okay, wow, what a quick engagement. Triple water strike there, right on top of Happy, but he did use that slide to get away. And subbed again by the skin of their teeth. Outlaws coming up clutch. That point's gonna go to the Houston Outlaws. Two and two now as we move on to the next one. And final one. London's Bitfire just weren't able to utilize any of those ultimates. They couldn't find a window to get into that fight. So now we have to go over to Bomb Flats. And this is a much more level ground where there's a lot of corners and sort of thin chokes. Hardy's Reinhardt should get a lot more value, but you can see the Outlaws, they're trying to cut the Spitfire off. His EMP hits Fearless Pelican and Happy Fearless Super Low hits the Meteor Strike. But it's actually Sparker that falls. Of all people to fall in that fight, I did not imagine Sparker. Wasn't near Hardy's shield either. All right, there you go. EMP from London Spitfire. You'd think it was from the Outlaws by the look of the team fight, but no, all right. Completely wasted. And in fact, Backbone's now switching up. Yeah, he tried to EMP Fearless, but the problem is Fearless lived just long enough to get the Spam Meteor Q. Strike off. Yeah, spamming that Q. As soon as he gets up in that air, all of a sudden London Spitfire just don't have the ability to stay in the fight. And Admiral just, it doesn't feel like he wants to use this sound barrier other than to counter some of these big ultimates. And here well, one is. I was about to say, <laughs> Admiral's right in the line of sight again. Just the collapse from the Houston Outlaws. 30. 5% of it. Oh, no. Staggering. They're not. Oh, they're oh. staggering the May. Oh, that's so. Leave back no. alone. This, that's rough. That is, that might just be it. If they take an early fight here, then they Scott, go again. Yeah. Then they could just go. Yeah. Just rush him down. Admiral has to be careful. He cannot get picked. He is all of their support. Staggers are huge on Flashpoint. They don't end up going for like an aggressive beat, an aggressive rush or anything, but they're still holding forward. There's another overclock from Happy. 
He has the ability to execute this point. There's the rush, there's the overclock, runs the high ground for Happy, a little bit aggressive with the return sound barrier from Apple does catch two. Only him right now has got that uh, over health, but the latest Ooh. sound barrier from the outlaws is Happy sails through the air and takes down Avril. A, pu a punch to cancel the shatter two, that's surely it. Nothing London can do now to come back from this one. Houston outlaws. 99% on what looked like a Spitfire victory on Flashpoints. The Outlaws come back, clutch masters, two and one of the series and match point. Just upping the tempo, playing to their own strengths, never giving London Spitfire the opportunity to set up and use their ultimates. It felt like they were holding on to them for the whole last two points. Maybe coming up with a couple of ideas, not playing flat-footed, play your own game. Damn. There was so many points in that series, or like uh, that map, sorry. But you think of London have that. Just these small advantages the Outlaws have managed to eke out. That was a crazy map. On something that you'd think would be quite London favored, especially with how Outlaws have been playing in terms of their support comps. But man, I mean, Scott, second to last match of the regular season. And it's uh, it's a treat, that is for sure. I'm loving this minute. Once again, it's just like, the, the clutch factor of the London, uh, sorry, of the Houston Outlaws, sorry, is unparalleled. Their ability to just individually step up in such a ridiculous level, but not only on an individual level, collaborate with your individual brilliance to be able to sort of win fights that technically should be unwinnable. This fight right here, that was a fight where London Spitfire had four ultimates and Houston Outlaws only had one. Four How ultimates win that? to win the map. Yeah. And they had 99% of that point too. Man. All right. New Queen Streets, gonna push. Could it end here or are we going to map number five? We'll have to find out right after this.
Welcome back, everybody. Houston Outlaws with a win, a very clutch one of that, on Flashpoint. New Junk City. Man, what a, what a ridiculous series so far, Scott. I mean, Midtown was London Spitfires. Outlaws managing to come back here. We're going to New Queen Street. But, um, I mean, the boy right here, fearless on the Doom Fist in that last map. Look at the eliminations and deaths. Like, this is the match so far, too. 25 minutes played. Does not die a whole lot, and he sets up his team for success too. High level of eliminations there. And you can understand why he's going with this Doomfist pick. As much as it can feel like it sometimes gets isolated, the amount of disruption, he's, he doesn't even need to get final blows or do a ton of damage. He just needs to be disruptive to enable the rest of his team, and he can just go in, be a threat. And honestly, Doomfist is a pick that we haven't really seen be meta in the Overwatch League since, I don't know, even know, like when 5v5 first came out, that was the first time we ever really saw Doomfist, but He's making a name for how strong it can be, and he, you know, it's worth noting, Doomfist actually did get buffed in the most recent patch, where his uh, seismic slam cooldown got reduced by a second, and that changes the cycling of second everything. Is huge. Yeah, that one second really enables the Doomfist to be a lot more disruptive and also just be able to live and move around the map a lot faster. He really is one of the goats, like Fearless. Oh yeah, in he will be remembered as yeah. one of the greatest tanks to ever play the game. Obviously, people know him for his Winston, but he's been able to play every main tank that he's ever been required. And you add that on top of his Cinderella story of going from the 0-40 Shanghai Dragons Ridiculous. to winning a championship, winning finals MVP last year. He is, he is a great that we've had and we've been blessed to watch his career. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, New Queen Street. You know what London are playing, that's for sure. I want to see Phyllis just keep on this Doomfist. There's a lot of ways you can kind of insert yourself as Doomfist in this map, I think, especially with the, the middle point of the map. It's a bit tough when you get near the checkpoint. There's not many too, too, uh, too many different ways for Doomfist to kind of jump into the fight. But if you're fighting round mid, it's pretty easy for Doomfist to find these weird flanks. And that's how the Outlaws have been winning a lot of the time too, because they know London is just stacked up. And that's the problem I think London Spitfire might run into on New Queen Street is that there is a lot of flank angles. There's a lot of people who can just be everywhere all at once. And there's a lot of great health packs around as well. So how are they going to manage to sort of, I guess, capture or isolate targets of the Houston Outlaws? It's just going to be difficult. All right, New Queen Street, here we go. Here we go. Toronto, which uh, will be here later as well, uh, later this year as well. Yeah. Hopefully you got your grand finals tickets. Yeah, make sure you go book them. Oh, don't forget the Pickums as well. I did see a tweet about that about the Pickums. There, I think uh, they said their brain said outlaws, but their heart said Spitfire. Oh no, their Pickums said outlaws. Sorry, and uh, their heart said the London Spitfire. And honestly, that's pretty fair. Like London Spitfire, they've definitely been a team that people just they love to cheer for and they love to stand behind London, just of how unique their playstyle is, regardless of the meta. And it just so happens right now, this meta is very much suiting them how they want to play. And it's about Houston Outlaws kind of grappling with this Reinhardt because every team at some point or another this season has to sit down and go, okay, this ah. week we're playing Spitfire. It's it's we're it's that, it's got a big circle on the calendar. Exactly, right? Like, yeah. Oh god, what are we, what we're are we playing Spitfire. Do? We know they're gonna play Ryan, they're probably gonna play Sim May. Like how do we topple this? How do you practice against that? How do you do anything against this? Because the way that Hardy and the team plays around it is completely unique and is top notch and no one else can really emulate this level of success playing the Reinhardt. We're gonna see them come out with the Symmetra of Sparker. Maybe that's their solution to sort of managing to get on top of players, but who do you isolate out of any of these targets from the Houston Outlaws? How do you get on anybody? Happy has to be the best target. He's the oh. only one who can't teleport, but he's shooting at you already. Happy <laughs> who gets the first kill there. First strike. Ooh, nice oh, nice punch. Wow. wow, what a punch. If that was a powder one, they would die there for sure. Big size big slam by Fearless. Look at that ult charge as well, Scott. Yeah. Seventy percent towards a BTS strike already. Oh, oh the Suzu. That's Suzu there. So uh, the pin didn't connect from Hardy. All right, okay, cool. Not sure if that was. That everybody wasn't intended, or probably not. But that looked pretty sweet. I think I'd like to see Sparker switch off of this Symmetra. I do not. Oh wow, he gets picked as well from the uh, the Shu Kunai's. But I think it's just going to be like, who are you teleporting onto? Where are you going to go? It's really rough. Oh, okay. There you go, Cassidy. Cassidy. I don't hate that as well. The hindered effect can be really difficult to deal with as your as a Kiriko, as a Doomfist, as a Sombra. Stops them from just te teleporting out whenever they want to. Good shout, good shout. 
I mean, I got it. You got to be scared though. Yeah. Look at the amount of ult charge that Houston Outlaws have right now. They got EMP Scott. They got Meteor Strike. They're gonna have Railgun soon as well. Slowly but surely, they're just waiting for this so they can get a catch point. There it is. The EMP is just too good. Spark are going down. Spitfire huddling for warmth right now, but I think that fire is going to be just ex soon extinguished as Hardy falls, landing against the Exo Boots, jump into the little window, but that's really about it. They stole the bot for mere moments, and now the checkpoint on the horizon for the Houston Outlaws. The ultimate economy is just too strong. Yeah, and th that only cost them one ultimate as well, recognizing they didn't need anything else to close out that fight. And it feels like London Spitfire are just consistently walking into a trap, right? They they wanna they wanna get on top of someone, but they don't have any targets, so they're just sort of standing around the outlaws. They can choose to strike whenever they want. They get out of way of Pelican at least. Don't want to give them free farming. Checkpoint hasn't been unlocked either. <laughs> 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 Little dance there from Fearless and Hardy. I charge. You have to slam away. Solo hack on the land. A wall goes down. When when are they gonna? Oh, what? I don't think you get it. Here comes the sound barrier, stopping that meteor strike doing damage, Ooh. Fearless punching into a wall. One HP, picks up the mega health pack. That window is going to stop them from doing much damage right now, that being the Houston Outlaws, just, uh, even more so with Happy dying. However, they're still wanting to commit. Sound barrier utilized, and everybody just jumping over the blizzard. Nice Ooh. little headshot there by Bakbo. Can he land the second one? No, he cannot. He's going to get hacked, receiving a bit of extra damage, but a scrappy fight is going to ensue. And Lucio's, yeah, battling off against each other on top of that bus. Fearless trying to get uh, a couple of rocket punch kills there, but not to be. There you go. Shoot dead. Fine. And London taking control. Listen, Happy comes back and gets a pick. Okay. And they were just able to weather the storm that the Outlaws are bringing at them. Pelican up to another EMP though, just charging that one up so quickly. But it's good to see Spitfire getting some meterage on the board. I mean, it's not going to be meterage for long, right? I mean, look at himself already. Yeah. yeah, but you don't want to use it on a backbone. Backbone's one of the few targets that can actually sustain through it. Oh, sneaking around. Going into the room. Oh, it's, it's so big. It's so... <laughs> right, oh, we got the person on the payload too. Okay. Pelican propping himself off the little window ledge there, just sitting down, having a good time. Spitfire inflicting with a five-man EMP. Now the bot's going to get moving again. 20 EMP is not the worst thing in the world, but you've got to be scared of that payload, or that uh, checkpoint coming up. The Sombra EMP is just so difficult for London Spitfire to deal with. They don't really have many tools. They need to stay together. That's the whole point of their composition, but that's where Sombra thrives. Oh, nice hindernade. Yep. That magnate landing onto Pelican, stops him from teleporting, and there you go. All right, there you That is what you want to see if you're a lunch Spitfire fan right now. Spark hitting these magnates, stopping Pelican getting away with murder. That's what you need to see, right? You need to see them isolating and taking down targets. That's why they are playing the Cassidy. So we're able to close that one out and get some more some more progress. They, they're they very getting very close to matching the meterage from the Houston Outlaws. Speed, high noon, Meteor Strike. There's the sound barrier. Oh, super early. I don't know why that one came the out. Meteor Strike is still in the air. Yeah, now, only just now, Phyllis has come down from the sky. Just get a two-man punch into the wall. No, that window and that shatter being used by the London Spitfire, just kind of huddling around Hardy. Making sure Sparker doesn't get his head ripped off by Harpy. 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 <laughs> Harpy. Happy can be a Harpy. Harpy. Especially Harpy. on Sombra. I was being very posh British gentleman. <laughs> Danny should be listening. He's trying to learn an English accent, by the way. It's terrible. Sorry, Danny. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and we're actually going to have London Spitfire taking the lead. They're getting the checkpoint. It's going to be an overclock here from Happy. Just looking for players. They do trade back for Violet. And Backbone gets Happy as well. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, London Spitfire, they're the ones coming up with the picks. Ah, the accuracy is to the right clicks. Too good. Can he get Shu too? Or can he get Shu in fact? He has Blizzard. He has Blizzard. Yeah, he's just going to eat it in. Why not? Wow. Forces the transication. Hello, hello, Violet. <laughs> yeah, hello, Violet. Can, he's behind Violet, the payload. We can see you there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can see you. You can't hide behind the car for long. And that was a really good turnaround there from Backbone. And Soon London Spitfire kills. forward spawns. And he kills Happy as well. Forward spawns, like you said. Sound barrier invested. A pin onto Fearless. So that overhealth just disappearing in a blink of an eye. And this is London Spitfire taking over this fight. They're starting to crumble. Obviously, when they were first winning these team fights, cycling their ultimates well. But now they've had a couple of poor ultimates. All of a sudden, London Spitfire, they're just holding up 
to the damage that's coming through. They're just living long enough with some individual brilliance from Backbone as well. London Spitfire are running away with New Queen Street. Oh, man. EMP for Pelican. It's going to have to be large again. But look, everybody's split up right now. They're There's... just getting so much meterage while nothing They're is waiting. happening. There's the EMP. Okay, instantly collapsed onto Huddy. Here comes the seismic slam. This should be an easy fight win, but you expect it to be. They're going to try and... Well, you can't really stagger people in this game mode, but... Barley getting his revenge, finally. But 89 meters got, and the checkpoint, most importantly. Outlaws haven't got the same. They're like... A, a, one meter or like point is like two pixels, bro. Uh, yeah. I'm looking at the screen. It's a big TV, but it's like two pixels. I yeah, promise. get your ruler out, Jack. That'll. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, let me just get my ruler out. <laughs> just sort of check that one out. They haven't got the checkpoint. They do not have the checkpoint, and because London Spitfire had theirs, they're already set up in the window. And it's the good old New Queen Street oh, window <laughs> strat where the go. Reinhardt is going to stand here, and Policy the bomb will moment. not move as long as the Reinhardt stands here. So, how do the Houston Outlaws deal with this? And now we wait. Oh, Pelican is still shooting them from the back line. Oh, and Phyllis dies. Well, yeah. I'll tell you how you stop the bot, um, or like move the bot, is if you move it in the other direction. Yeah, and that's the, that's the problem, right? London Spitfire have five ultimates whenever they want to pop any of these. because the, So the Outlaws need to be oh. the ones to do something. They're the ones who need to put the pressure on. They need to be careful about getting staggered here. Yeah, you cannot go down right now, and Hardy shifting in. Happy. He's standing getting... around with half health. He's Not... got the shift. That's an early land here from Landon. That's a window now that the Outlaws can engage, but half of gets taken up by Backbone. Again, through the window, headshot, insta-kill. There's the shadow onto Shu, who's trying to TP into the back line. Nice counter pin from Hardy too. I, this is the Houston Outlaws crumbling right now under the weight of the London Spitfire. They're just too strong, they're too burly. Too burly, and Shu goes over to the Ana thinking maybe they need the biotic grenades to be able to just sort of get some damage. And Shu can play from spawn, so that has to be the idea. But still, Spitfire holding on to both DPS ults. They have the High Noon, they have the Blizzard, so anytime Outlaws go in, it's going to be a problem. Overclock from Happy. Blizzard, though. Fearless is in trouble. He's going to get frozen. He's right behind the bot as well, so no healings. No heals are incoming. Landed with two kills in the fight. There's a High Noon, Scott. Still available. They can stall that for a long time here. If Violet ends up going down, it will be disastrous. Hi. Honey's He's just chasing them, don't worry. Chasing them away from the bots. And rightfully so, Scott. They can't actually match them. In fact, Fearless jumps over to the Arissa. EMP? And then the EMP. No follow up. Oh, I mean, Spark is dead, sure. There's 48 seconds to go, mate, and they need 70 meters. And you get those three picks on London Spitfire. You have four spawns. You have the advantage. More than happy to set this one back up. They're keeping Backbone alive, and all they have to do is regroup and win one more team fight. Houston Outlaws are crumbling right now, Jack. I mean, what ults do Houston Outlaws have now? They got that sound barrier, that's about it. Just one neutral fight here, or what, five more for London to win? Like, the snowball of the century is required right now for the Houston Outlaws. The snowball the size of Mount Everest, I think. A couple of headshots there by Sparker it was saved. Oh, double tap on the happy. That'll do for the start. All right, boys, time to WM1 into the back line. Phyllis already going golden. Perfect time for Sparker to try and high noon. However, he does end up getting anti A nano boost onto Phyllis just trying to sway Sparker from doing anything. There's the sound barrier, though. That nano boost is going to wear off, and now they're just staring at Sparker through a window. Landon takes down Phyllis, and now Sparker is still holding on to the high noon as Pelican tries to just dive around this. Spot. Spark is not getting too many shots down as Happy rejoins the fight, but Backbone is still in control. He is pushing the bot right now, forcing Pelican to get the touch in the Ember. Sparky still comes up with a kill with a nade. Happy falling here is disastrous. London Spitfire have three ults coming back. Overtime ticks down, and map number five is on the cards. London Spitfire just too strong. The Cassidy switch from Sparker was clutch. Obviously missed a few shots at the end there. We won't talk about that. But overall, he found so much value. The hinder grenade doing exactly what it's supposed to, where anytime someone tried to apply individual pressure or try and go that little bit too deep, he was there to counter them. And honestly, London Spitfire playing the rush composition to a T as we know them to do. I mean, backbone, savior right now yeah. for the London Spitfire. I mean, these EMPs are also great by Pelican, but backbone getting so many picks instantly with the May. Like, yeah. May is his best hero. 
for sure. He probably, he'll probably say Genji, let's be real. But from what we see in the Overwatch League, his Mei is second to none. One of the best ones we have in our right now. And you can see why it works out for London too. If Backbone's even able to get a little bit of damage down, and he gets more than that. He always comes up with kills at the start of fights. And that's what makes this entire London Spitfire team so good at this composition is, you know, they've struggled in other metas, but they just play this composition where every player is on their individual best hero. Landon's Baptiste, Admiral's Lucio, that backline combo is world-class at these heroes. Backbone and Sparker being able to play their comfort as well, and we all know Hardy, Reinhardt's his guy. Yeah. So, London Spitfire looking very strong, but now they have an issue, Jack. Dorado. <laughs> Not a great Reinhardt map, historically. Not historically, but there's cool things you can do with teleporters. Okay. Well, might be playing a little bit of game of Portal 2 in a minute, Scott. We're going to jump to a quick break. Map number five, Houston Outlaws and London Spitfire go in the distance. Welcome back, map five banger between the Houston Outlaws and the Boston Uprising, our second to last regular season match of this season. Man, it has been a wild ride this series so far. It's been literally back and forth. Outlaws won, then London Spitfire, then Outlaws, then London Spitfire on New Queen Street. We're going to Dorado is our next map, Scott. And just before the break, he was saying, well, Dorado, might be a bit of an issue here for the London Spitfire. Not the best Rhine map. Yeah, it's it, it, Reinhardt has this crazy inability, and that's to go up walls. Mm. Fortunately, Symmetra does solve that problem somewhat, but that doesn't, just because you can get up there, doesn't mean you're going to win. So, hey, if anyone's going to pull it off, it is going to be the London Spitfire. 
you know, both these teams, not a whole lot to play for in this match overall. Doesn't have a lot of implications. Maybe some seeding for the London Spitfire. But overall, they're going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and it's cool to see what they both have moving into the playoffs and the play-ins. Houston Outlaws fans, maybe a little... It's just, it's just, they're, they're just having fun, right, Jack? They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're hey, not whoa, actually, whoa, we're they're not struggling, right? No, yeah, no, they're no. just having fun. Hey, come on, come on. They Pelican, awesome. Fun. See, they're having fun. Awesome. You're awesome. It's awesome. That's awesome. awesome Pelican. Really happy for Pelican. I have been. <laughs> His blade's been sick, man. I want to see some more. I want to see some more, please. See what our outlaws have got for the offense here. London Spitfire, of course. You know him, you love him. They're going to run the same thing. May and Sim. Oh, TP around the map. I wonder if they're going to go for a, a, cl a classic trick that used to happen on Dorado all the time where they're going to all stack up in red. And when you all stack up in red, just like on New Queen Street, and we talked about, you can stop the bot from progressing <laughs> and you can all sit in the room mm. and, uh, and just pr hold the bot. And then you can do it once again at multiple points. Mm, Hardy playing the, uh, the spawn door on the high ground. Mm, never mind. This is the other classic shot of wait. Shoe knows, right? I think I think this is Outlaws recognizing that London Spitfire might Shoe try knows. to do this stack into red. Happy's play, happy playing Jarrah. Yeah, happy's playing Jarrah. I don't know if London Spitfire are gonna do it. If you see them come out Junkrat Mercy Bro. Echo, you do not go in that small room. Bro, Hardy, what are we Hardy. doing here? Hardy, 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 Hardy. Bro, Hardy. Hardy. Okay. Well, yeah, a lot of explosive power. Well, that didn't work. No. <laughs> Not at all. Okay, on to the next page of the strat book of how to play Reinhardt on Dorado, because that one was a bust. <laughs> a lot of explosive power is what I will say uh, on the side of the Houston Alice. Oh, okay, less explosive power. Just for the spawn hold there. Uh, happy switching over to the hand zone. No more uh, Jake Rat. It's just going to be a little bit more consistent than the junk rat if they're not in a small room, but London Spitfire, they're going to up the tempo. They're just going to take as many fights as they can. This Mercy Echo is going to be a problem because they don't have the tools to be able to deal with this. And leaving Pelican unchecked on Echo with a Mercy damage boost, that's going to be a problem. Uh, yeah, he has copy pretty much. Don't let him get a one shot. And they're having to concede so much space just to respect this Echo. Yeah, I mean, who's shooting him, right? I mean, Backbone. It's got crazy aim, but shooting an Echo and a Mercy consistently is impossible. And you're playing Symmetra Lucio. If you're the London Spitfire, you can't stand around like this. I want to see them up the tempo soon. They need to get on the back line of the Outlaws. Oh, nice block there. Stops the nade from killing him instantly. And uh, Phyllis is in the back line. Nice oh, little feel Phyllis. kill. Oh, Pelican. Obviously, two shots. Adaptive circuit is engaged. Lucio. Lucio. Get him. Lucio copy. Okay, Pelic. Well, you, I guess you can speed a bit of back from spawn. All Good right, guys. All I'm Lucio. All good. Happy's carry. Speed boost. He's not going to get beat. He's not going to get beat. There's nope. no chance. No, there's no chance. All good. Back to normal echo. Gameplay and shenanigans. Oh, Backbone's on the point. Hardy's going to be able to re-engage right now, but they need to protect a Backbone. Nano boost on to Fearless. And there's the Blizzard, but here come the kills for the Houston Outlaws. Not, more, uh, not much more you could do there if you're the London Spitfire. And that's the problem, right? They're just sort of stuck standing around trying to find some value, find, trying to find picks, but eventually over time, Happy's going to find picks, Pelican's going to find picks, especially with a Mercy on the field as well. If they're able to get value out of resing targets, they're sort of playing into the Outlaws game. And in general, that's why people don't play Reinhardt on Dorado. So let's see if it's going to work better on the second point. Let us see, let us see. Waiting for one of these uh, right clicks from Sparker and Backbone to land at the same time. Yo, that would be and sick. then it's an instant kill. That would be very what? epic. Okay, well, she was, she was equally <laughs> as confused. Not gonna go that was, way. <laughs> what is going on? How did you know? Oh, nice little fire strike. Whoa, whoa. That was aggressive. Yeah, Shu got hit with a fire strike there, but look at it. Oh, hoo -hoo, Backbone. Okay, I want to see some ice schools hidden. And they are now hidden. Yeah, and some fire strikes from Hardy as well. There, yeah. There's the, that two-player combo that you were talking about. Backbone Adaptive Circuit's engaged. Lucio! Wait, what the hell are you again? He's going in, Scott. Okay, they TP'd away. And now he is shooting turret. He's not going to get beat again. Pelican is literally, he hasn't said a word the entire time. It's that one you, when you use an ultimate and it's so bad that you just try and hope nobody else on your team notices what you just did. Everybody noticed. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nice kill. Oh, a nice kill from Backbone again. Kill a Violet in midair. 
And there's a, Outlaws are a, a little all over the place, scatterbrained right now. And the Spitfire just punishing them for a little bit of their... Uh... If he copies into Lucio a third time, it's not a mistake, it's a strat. I just... just because it's a strat doesn't mean it's a good strat, though, Jake. Uh, Jack. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> I, I, I had Jake on my mind because I can imagine Jake just yelling He's at the Outlaws. Focus on! Ball thing right now, Jake. is ball thing at the Just move. do it! What are you doing, copying Lucio? Nice Dragon Strike, forcing people down from high ground. Backbone in trouble, pops the block. However, he is very alone. Don't worry, Apple to the rescue. Actually, he's going to help him out somewhat. Here's the Primal, though, from Fearless. Already under half HP and slowed down, too. Going to just do a little bit of surfing. Whee! And over to the Mega Health Bank and back into the action again. Nano boost this time onto Pelican. And yeah, Hardy stands at no chance. Yeah, damage boost, Echo with Nano, one shot, basically every ability. Landon still finds a kill on Fearless, though, but all good. Gets Rez back up and now. Minute and 45 remaining for the Outlaws. That was an expensive fight for them to win. Primal, Nano, Valkyrie. But Lucio copy. Coming in. Yeah, Le Pelican, not again. Please. You must have to copy Ryan just face Hardy, right? Yeah, but even a Reinhardt duplicate isn't that great. I, I guess there aren't many good options. Uh, Baptiste obviously is the best one uh, out of the playbook. So let's see what he goes for this time. Let's see what he does. Here comes the wall from the Sip. He saw the Lucio. He wants it. He saw the Lucio. He's going for a copy. Oh, no, he's going for the Beam instead. Toss land and two, just carrying in the corner. Phil is taking a little bit too much damage. There's no uh, backup. Oh, we're watching Pelican. We are watching. Oh no, he copied the back. All good. Now he just gets to shoot people with a lamb. Well, she was already dead, but at least they got uh, two supports still. Because it's fun. Yeah, it's all good. And there's the free window onto the high ground. Blizzard goes down, so everyone's gonna move away from the point. Lamb. Wow. All the pit. Not quite. What does Hardy do in this situation? He's just being juggled every time he tries to step up. Yeah. They run away. And He's getting Pelican's mad pogs though, Scott. And he has got a shadow if anybody lands in front of him. Ooh. Being fearless. Dragon Strike on the point. Fearless already taken down Landon. Backbone's now anchoring, making sure they don't cap. There's the Ice Block. Now Admiral goes in for the touch. Ice Block disappears. Melts. Same with Backbone's Hellfire. And there you go. Point two unlocked. Pelican. Ooh. Damage. And that's... Without a hit scan, it doesn't feel like they have a solution to Pelican. And they got the it. Mercy Pocket as well. Pelican's just sitting above them, There's raining the down sticky bombs, raining down cooldowns. And that's why Sparker is going to make that transition over to the Bastion so he can shoot this pesky Echo out of the air. And Shu is. He's waiting for someone to drop. Yeah, I think he's. He can hear them. Oh, They're dropping. Oh, it's huge. oh the nade is huge. Shu still ends up going down, but oh, the damage just raining from above. Pelican with a do man sticky nade kill. What a nade. It's just great presence of mind. What you understand IQ from what London Spitfire are going to do. They're going to want to rush us down. They're going to want to route around. They're going to have to go down this left side. Instant punish with only the nade. Cost feel us the primal, but you take those. Now a minute remaining for them to close out this final part of the third point. Valk, Nano, Copy. A lot of tools in their bank. There's the Nano onto Fearless, jumps the back line. And there's the Sound Barrier to try and match. Oh. That was aggressive, but it worked out. Pelican was on the floor. I All don't good. think he knew Pelican was there. I'm no, not going to lie. He knew. He knew his Pelican had to hold space to go Ooh, down nice slower. Move. Cancel the res. Cancel the res. Yes, he did. Love to see it, honestly. Things you love to see. Top 10. Pelican still with a duplication when he comes back. Wow. Magma went so low, but Happy does fall to Hardy. 30 seconds to go, Scott. It's been a bit more of a slugfest than you'd anticipate. Nice sleep. No extra kills for the London Spitfire. And they're trying to find any extra staggers. If they find any more picks, London Spitfire, sorry, Houston Outlaws might not get another attack, but they weren't able to find anything. Pelican with another duplicate. It's a lot of damage on the side of the London Spitfire there, Scott. Blizzard, Mortar Strike, like got everything. Oh, Pelican. Has oh, to use it early. Pelican goes for the Bastion. Well, you got. Oh, it's gone. My bad, Chief. My bad. Oh, we got the touch again. They get the touch. He's frozen, though, Scott. And there goes Violet and Pelican. The pocket duo is down. And that's where the payload will stop, Scott. And yeah, that duplication there, Scott. Not panic, but it kind of needed to. Honestly, all things considered, that's a pretty good hold from the London Spitfire yeah, for a Reinhardt Symmetra strategy. And I think Spark moving over to the Bastion was a good plan. I, I wonder if they're going to utilize that on attack as well. Or maybe they need the Symmetra to teleport themselves 
up to the high ground. Right. We'll have to see. But right now, the Houston Outlaws, it felt like they were finding value. It did feel like slight amounts of trolling in the middle there from the Outlaws, and that might have cost them a little bit of time and why they didn't end up closing it out. But overall, their strategy should be better here on the defense. Well, time will tell, that is for sure. Final map, the map five banger. Damn, regular season, especially this latter half, has definitely been a treat with the amount of variation we've been seeing. Yeah. Okay, he's doing it. Wait, Violet's doing it. No. Violet's doing it. Uh, yep, he's playing Live Weaver. Okay, let, let me let me sort of defend this a little bit because I've become an advocate for Life Weaver lately. Especially sure. when you're playing with an Echo, you can pocket the Echo pretty effectively in the same way that a Mercy could because you can just sort of charge up those Blossoms and heal the Echo in the air. The tree charges very quickly. If you're getting consistent healing out, you can pocket the Winston as well. There's a lot of great options and obviously the pedal platform can get people like Happy onto high ground. So it actually makes a lot of sense why they would be playing Life Weaver. Let's see if Violet can find the value. He's no rack attack. He is no rack attack. Ooh. Ella can take it a body shot. From the Hardy Roadhog bone. pocket pick. He's switching, don't worry. There we go. Reinhard it is. See how this uh, Life Weaver does then. The hands of Violet. One guy can, that can play it all pretty much. DPS tank and support at an unbelievably high level. Oh, it's rapid firing though. Yeah, I was going to say, he's not charging up too much. Going about 30. There's the big one. Boom. Interesting. But it's a, it's a good strategy. Right now, if you're the London Spitfire, you need to find an opportunity to go, right? There comes the Symmetra Teleporter. They're looking for Shu. Oh, <laughs> Landon jumped up. And Happy was not looking at Landon at all. I assume he thought he TP'd as well. Now Pelican is just getting turned to mincemeat. Yeah. And that, that's two picks there for Sparker. And all of a sudden, these staggers could continue to come through Fearless's. Going to fall, and the card is still moving, Jack, as these staggers come. That might just be the first point off the bat. Might get another touch, but there's no Lucio on the side of the Outlaws. It is quite far away, so you'd imagine they get another fight, a full one. But, but people are coming in so late. Like, look at where Shu is. You can oh, see him yeah. jumping down. It might not be a full one. Oh, happy with the power platform. Onto the high ground, jumps up. Wheels mode. Okay, where's the targets? He's hunting, searching. Teleport right on top. Oh, oh backbone back teleports to his death. No one followed him up, but uh, landed with the exo boots onto the high ground. There was no one to heal him. Violet couldn't get an angle. Here comes the tree, though. That overhealth is going to build up as soon as people reach 100%. But Violet is just getting dominated. Nano boost onto Fearless. Pin shattered and just. <laughs> oh, my word. Just bullet holes just riddled with them. Look at Sparker giving a little bit of a chuckle as he just puts like a thousand bullets into the, <laughs> the Winston. You can tell Spark is not a tank player. He has no empathy for what just happened. No, he has uh, nothing. <laughs> yeah. Pure fun was had by the DPS player. And that's potentially one of the hardest points to assail if you are playing this Reinhardt. The second hardest would be this point exactly, where how do you get this Hanzo Baptiste Echo off of the high ground when you only really have one way of getting up there, and that's with the Symmetra Teleporter. There's the <laughs> All right, here, that's what I wanted to see. The copy onto the Rhine. Now, what you got for us? Spark instantly popped the wheels mode as soon as that copy came in. And look, they're just holding Pelican at bay right now. I mean, the Fire Strike gets a little bit of damage, I suppose. Pelican's well, he's, he's, he's out. just out. He doesn't want anything to do with London Spitfire right now. The good pick off from Happy. Random headshot hitting Admiral. Been pretty good about that one. That should slow everything down here for the London Spitfire. They don't have the sound barrier to live through it. Hardy pins Shu somehow, good some nades. way, but good it's not going to matter. That nade from Shu. Super clean. <laughs> How'd he hit him with a little <laughs> Maybe it was lucky. a little lucky from Hardy on that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Pure skill. Pure skill. And we got an Ana Baptiste, by the way, on the side of the Outlaws, which. I honestly kind of like, usually it's unconventional and not expected, but with Shu and Violet both able to sit on this high ground and do just a ton of damage, could prove valuable. There's lots of different uses of the ultimates too. Window for Happy, Nano for Pelican, etc. Another oh. pick from Happy. I think it's another one, all right. And this is going to happen if London Spitfire keeps trying to do what they're doing, where instead of trying to assail the high ground, they're trying to push the car from underneath them and just sort of live to fight. Yeah, look at this angle too from Happy. He's pretty much invincible up here as the Hanzo. And she's the waiting party. I think they are. Oh, they're stacked. 
Well, it wasn't the biggest dagger in the world, but time is time off the time bank. That was a sentence. <laughs> that was a sentence time is of time, time off the time bank. <laughs> that is true. That Jack is Jack 2023. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming up to 10 ultimates, though, so everything is going to get thrown. Honestly, there are, funnily enough, there are 10 ultimates, and almost none of them are impactful. Like these big. Team fight ultimates. There's gonna be a Ooh, fast TP. Up. Big nade. Oh, well, there's the sound barrier. Hardy pins in. His Pelican Dragon Strike on the high ground misses the entirety of London. And Landon finds two kills, and of course he does. But Phyllis making this equal. Trade it up. Kills the back line of London, who now once again had to cower in this uh, little choke point here by Church as Phyllis gets perma pocketed by Violet. He's got Primal Rage to back him up as well. But they don't really need to do anything. They just need to hold this positioning because London Spitfire, they can't punish them for sitting on this high ground. They have finally reinforced. They still have four of their ultimates in their bank. As the wall, will it mean a whole bunch though? I mean, Village is just going to bat them through it. Bubble does separate the healing for a brief moment. There's the Primal Rage as he descends back to Earth. And now he's confused wherever he went. Found him though. There's the window. Almost ends up going down to the Wheelsmoke Bastion, but it's actually Backbone that finds the first pick onto Happy. They have a great crossfire here. Hardy can live for long enough nope. and he can be healed, but Anti. not if he's anti. Oh, Pelican holding shield on the point. There's one kill for the ultimate. That Mortar Strike finding shoot. And they're kind of stuck in this room at, at this point. You can see Outlaws surrounding them from all nice sides, but they get a great teleport action onto Violet. Jeez. They just keep finding one after another and then you're just taking people out bit what? by bit and now all of a sudden... How is Backbone finding these random right click kills? They're rolling into second point, Jack. Their teleport gameplay is superb. 50 seconds to go. Who's going to touch? It has to be Shu or Happy or Violet. None of those are great options. Happy, Happy, Happy's in. Oh, Violet steps up. I mean, Phyllis is back on the Rhine of all things. We wanted to see it. I don't think we're going to see it for much longer, Scott. I'm going to be honest with you. Remember, look at where the payload is, Scott. There's two minutes to go. They don't even need to complete the map. Yeah, it's not even at the very end either. Probably around the second corner. Someone's behind them. Felix goes over to the Romatra. Feels like desperation almost. Just trying to find any solution to these problems. Goes actually to the Winston, Winston. thinking better of it. London Spitfire upping the tempo. Oh, that's that's great if you're the London Spitfire. They dropped an amplification matrix almost at spawn. They're like, okay, yeah, you can have that part. Teleporter, he's looking for it. It's going to be a fake one. Almost. Window. Oh, fearless. fearless. Not quite getting out of line of sight quick enough. Shoe with a long range sleep, but would it matter? That payload is still moving. London Spitfire do end up losing Ooh. Hardy, however, as Pelican descends from the skies and helps Happy finish off that kill with a recon dart. Or a, a recon arrow, even. Oh, gotta be careful. They're teleporting behind you again. Dragonstride doing a lot of work, actually, separating the London Spitfire as Sparker ends up falling. They need to reset at this point. They put a, they tried to use their ultimates to keep themselves in the fight, but now it's just causing staggers. And now the Outlaws, they have the Nano Boost, they have the Duplicate Fearless. If they Nano Fearless, he's going to get another Primal Rage as well. This is where it gets hard for the Spitfire. They're running out of time. They don't have the luxury to just slowly play, slowly teleport around the map. And Outlaws, they're threatening a dive at any Look moment. at Shoe, look at Shoe. Teleports. Ooh, oh, this could be interesting. Wrapping around a Pelican's dead. Outlaws no are in duplication. Trouble. Outlaws, they're trapped between Ryan and the ocean. They've got a touch though. Remember that payload is still moving back, Scott. There's a sleep dart. Actually, it lands on Hardy. Can they actually execute the kill? I don't think they can. The card is moving. The card oh, is moving. Oh, the window. Jack. The window kills Hardy. His shield was broken. Here comes Pelican. Transforming into Bastion. Gets the duplication. Receives the lamp as well. Trying to get some damage in. But no, that neutral game not quite good enough. But the window coming out this time on Lander, but there might be too much damage. Scott Pelican over the top of the roof, manages to kill Sparker, and the spawns are too good for the Outlaws now. Five seconds to go. Sparker's going to be able to respawn just in time to use ult, maybe, but it is Hardy and Admiral on the point to try and stall. Dragon Strike to separate London Spitfire as Hardy eventually is slain. London, a valiant attempt pushing into the last one. Backbone hits the GGs, and Outlaws complete the map number five and complete this series. Don't give up, never surrender, and Outlaws take the dub. A scarier one, I must admit. No, map number five, I don't think many people had it on their cards. Maybe a minor a mistake from Hardy when the rest of his team went back to the point, tried to play to their advantage. He stayed in just a little bit too long and gets punished, but great play from the Outlaws. Weathering this nightmare from the London Spitfire with the Reinhardt. It is just so unconventional. You have to play in such a different way to your, what you're used to. 
but they managed to get the win at the very end. <laughs> a true map five banger. Our second to last series of the regular season. I couldn't have had it a better way. Houston Outlaws, honestly, kind of got run around a little bit on the first couple of maps. Like London Spitfire, you kind of know they're playing this comp. But in this meta, it does end up working. I mean, there's so many small stories in this series. I mean, Backbone was one of them for me on London side, just yeah. getting so many picks super early on. But Pelican throughout the series too has just been so, so phenomenal. Blades, his echo play was great, apart from the two Lucio copies. The echo play was great. And uh, all around, I mean, this couldn't have been a better series for the London Spitfire, taking a top three team to a map number five. And the question that I have for the Houston Outlaws is, they've played two matches since the new patch. They played the Vegas Eternal, and then they played right. London Spitfire, which both aren't great gauges for different reasons for how strong Houston Outlaws are as a team. You know, we're expecting this roster to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Florida Mayhem, Atlanta Reign, Juggernauts, right. and I haven't felt comfortable about either of these matches, so we're just going to have to work it out in the playoffs. Maybe the Outlaws are going to have to work it out as well. It was a close series, but player of the match for this series, it's going to be none other than Pelican. Shout him out enough in, in the series thus far with his Genji, his Echo, just everything he brings to the table, Scott. is just it's, it's splendid to watch. Yeah, he's just so clutch. That's what makes Pelican great. How many times, he hasn't had a huge career, but how many times in his career has he just won maps, won matches, and just won games for the Houston Outlaws? He's just such a dominant player, and it's cool to see him be able to play his signature heroes like Genji, like Echo, not Lucio so much, but you know. We're, we're not Lucio so much. He can't be perfect. That's true, no one's perfect, Scott. No one is perfect. It was, uh, yeah, I mean, with how this series went, and especially Hardy, right? I mean, <laughs> the Reinhardt, he's just taking the brunt of the damage. Hardy is just trying to, you see a lot of these clips where he's just kind of perma-holding shield, but that's because of how much pressure Pelican is putting out on the back line. Yeah. Hardy just, at the end of the day, needs to be able to survive, hope for the rest of his team to come up big, but Pelican just makes it so difficult for him to do so. These are echo stats for this match. Super low deaths, good damage, good final blows, good everything, really, I and mean, you can't ask more than that. Is anyone really surprised at this point? He's also playing against a Reinhardt. He should yeah. be free in the air. He should be putting out those numbers. You know, I'm not discrediting his performance, but it's almost another day at the office for Pelican. It really is, yeah. I mean, this roster is just so stacked for the Houston Outlaws this year. It's scary. And being top three team, you expect nothing less, but maybe those questions do remain, Scott. Yeah. How well are they going to do against teams like Atlanta Rain, the Florida Mayhem, etc.? Because going to a map five against London Spitfire, I mean, the desk predicted 3-1, 3-0, you know? And I think a lot of the chat probably expected the same thing. But nevertheless, though, Houston Outlaws take the dub in a map five, and that'll be it for us today. Scott, we're gonna jump to the desk. We still got another game coming up on your screens in just a moment. Welcome back one and all. What a fantastic match. As close as can be, really coming down to the wire to that very last fight. And I don't think, I mean, as much hope as a lot of people would have had for the London Spitfire, I don't think anyone would have expected, even the most hardcore London Spitfire fans, to have them go that close against the Houston Outlaws, a team which already qualified themselves for the playoffs, not the play-ins. That was a huge, that was an insane series. I mean, honestly, if you're the Houston Outlaws, you're just like, oh, we're thrilled. That was such a clutch a relief, performance. Yeah. <laughs> we're ready for the playoffs. Like, we clutched it out the Los Lono Spitfire, mm. looking good. We were able to beat the Rana Comp. If you're Lono Spitfire, you're like, oh my God, we almost beat the Houston Outlaws. <laughs> yeah, so we got anyway, it. Like, this we're was good. a great This was a victory, yeah. <laughs> this like, was great vibes all around. Yeah, I mean, that was, a, that was an L, but it felt like a W for sure. That was However, so close. both teams, Playing it really clutch, and there is one more demonstration here, Jake, of a very clutch moment that you would like. I just love this one map oh, on no. the Antarctic Peninsula so much, we have to look at it again. No, but there were so many moments here that I felt London could have edged out the series, and I want to look at one that, I mean, had this moment gone differently and not gone the Outlaws' way, this could have been a very different series. It could have been one-sided in the favor of London. So, first we can just roll the clip just a little bit. We got Pelican, he's setting up to touch point. And right here, what we can see already is B comes down from Admiral, shoe is picked, right? So this London Spitfire has already begun the fight, diving into the enemy spawn. They rushed in, they caught shoe. 
This is a great team movement from London, catching the Ana before the fight where she can't get any value, she can't set up, and the beat just secures that from Admiral. So I would say this is a very textbook, great play from London, something we see from them all series. And already this fight looks rough, so we can roll the clip and see how it goes, but Pelican and Happy are gonna stall this I, I would call this a miraculous stall, right? Violet goes down after he uses TP. Soon, Fearless is gonna fall too. And it's only Happy and Pelican. Look at this touch from Happy. Unbelievably close that he extends this overtime here. I mean, look at that. That looks like the game <laughs> is over, but somehow he's gonna make it. And we can also, we can just roll up from here and, and look actually at what happens next, which is, Next, it's Pelican's turn. He's back in for the third touch, right? And this whole time, Happy's been sitting on an EMP. He's been so incredibly patient, but now, finally, he gets his moment to strike. He's gonna solo kill the Batiste. That's gonna begin the opening. Comes back in for even more damage, and then, as we were talking about the casters, I think Scott was mentioning this, Pelican is unbelievably clutch. He makes it happen in this impossible circumstance. I mean, this is a point that you should never, this is a 2v5 comeback on control from overtime. I mean, that is something you almost never, ever see in the Overwatch League. I was impressed with Toronto doing a 3v5 comeback in the last series. This is a 2v5 comeback. <laughs> Bottom Unreal. line. Bottom line. Jake loves Pelican. Unreal. I think this was this was Pelican and Happy combining though, right? Yeah. Like to dance on the point to go one one after the other at the very last second, like no margin for error. And to be honest though, I think it speaks highly of London that this is the level the Outlaws yeah. need to play to. Like you can't look at this and look at, oh, Outlaws, you're making all these mistakes, you're slipping up. It's like, no, London is extremely good at this comp. They have slipped up in some of those crucial team yeah. fights, but that just shows how hard it is to play this comp and not get punished by dive teams like the Houston Outlaws. Let's actually roll the clips again. Uh, not those clips. I mean, mm. they might make it into the highlight reel here, <laughs> but let's just uh, revisit the entire match, starting with uh, match number one, of course, Antarctic Peninsula. Johnny, what stood out to you? I mean, I think that the Houston Outlaws overall did a really good job adapting to what the London Spitfire brought out. You know, Fearless did play some Doomfist in this series, and Doomfist, with a few minor buffs, is actually performing pretty well here. So, you know, coming out with these compositions, I think they were so, just so clutch. They were so precise when it came to their ultimate usage, their rotations. We saw here, for example, Violet on the Kiriko, and Shu and Diana sometimes would flank around and just play around the opposition. I think that just displays how good they are at navigating around Usually, a Reinhardt composition that when you play Bastion Sombra, it's pretty immobile. You kind of need that Symmetra to teleport you around. So, Houston Outlaws, their positioning, they were super clutch. Um, I mean, they, they just gave Happy all the resources here on Sojourn as well. Um, I, I think Houston Outlaws played like a really good series here. And the fact that they went to map five, I, yes, you could look at that and be like, well, Houston Outlaws didn't play that well. I mean, map five against Lono. Like, I, I actually think they were really clinical throughout this series with really impressive plays throughout. So this was more London playing up to the Houston Outlaws. I think so. Yeah, yeah, I actually think so. Yeah. I mean, the, the fact that like you know they made that Ryan Cop work on, on New Queen Street, which is a map that's sort of dive, uh, you know, more dive heavy. And not only that, like the last map on Dorado as well, they London Spitfire was able to make that work against the Houston Outlaws. And sure, like Zoe, you said, you know, they did get the lose. Of course, they probably wanted the win, but. You know, it was a loss, but it felt kind of like a win because you're going <laughs> really into did. the playoffs, you know? If you could play against Houston Outlaws, one of the top three teams that we have, this close, what a name, you know, bro. they're Five like, hey, okay. we're good. We can, we can make this work. Honestly, though, like, if I were any of the other teams in the play-ins, I'd be scared now. Yeah. This opens up the field. Not only does it, you know, like, oh, shoot, like, there's another real contender for the play-ins uh, who can get the, that spot into the playoffs. But also, now there is another composition you need to prepare against. I mean, because London Spitfire will roll up with that Reinhardt, like whether you like it or not, yeah. you have to have an answer to it. I, I think there's like three comps that are going to clash in these play ins. I mean, we've got Toronto playing this double flex oh, yeah. support, heavy poke flanking style, London with their ride, and Fearless showing us the dive style that is still viable. Still, I mean, incredible stats on Doom. This hero was buffed this patch. Didn't seem to be enough to get a ton of love from every team, but. The Outlaws, they love to play dive, and so they've been leveraging it the most. I think all these styles can work. Boston has shown us Junker Queen styles. I mean, this is an incredibly balanced meta where teams are really playing what they're the best at, and you just can't predict who's gonna come out on top. It's gonna make those play-ins and playoffs so exciting to watch. A real game of chess being played, but uh, let's hear it from the winners. Danny, we've got Fearless ready for our winner's interview. All right, time to talk to Fearless, everybody. Wee.
All right, Fearless, big congratulations on getting the win today against London Spitfire. It was actually a very close match. How did you guys come out on top against the London Spitfire? 자, 오늘 생각보다 굉장히 어, 접전인 경기였는데 오늘 어떻게 해서 런던을 좀 이기시게 되신 것 같으십니까? 아, 일단 런던을 이긴 거는 일단 저희 팀원들이 너무 잘해줬기 때문에 이겼다고 생각합니다. 아, 진짜 너무 힘들었어 가지고 저는. <웃음> Right. Uh, I do. I do think that we were able to get the win because all, all, all of our teammates just played amazingly. Uh, but for me, it was a very difficult fight throughout the end, uh, throughout the whole series. Um, you know, I think not only the teammates, but I think you did a fantastic job as well. And something interesting that we saw was you on that doof is something that we haven't seen before, and you have shown us a lot today in today's series. So was that something that you that the Houston Outlaws prepared specifically for London Spitfire, or is that like the new sort of dive style that the Houston Outlaws are sort of going? <웃음> 자, 어, 방금 팀원들이 잘해서 이겼다고 하셨는데 또 그것뿐만 아니라 제가 봤을 때또 우리 어, 피어레스 선수의 둠피스트를 좀 얘기를 하고 싶어요. 오늘 어떻게 보면 처음은 아니지만 되게 굉장히 긴 장시간 동안 어, 어떻게 보면 둠피스트 이 다이브를 어, 조합을 좀 선보였는데 이게 런던을 위해서 좀 특별하게 준비를 한 건지 아니면 좀 요즘 휴스턴이 지금 연습하고 있는 좀 그런 스타일인지 궁금합니다. 네, 일단 저희가 뭐 사실 이러, 이것저것 조합 다 해가지고 피스트나 오리사나 이것저것 많이 다 해봤는데 일단 런던을 어떻게 준비해야 될지 솔직히 잘 모르겠었어요. 왜냐하면은 런던처럼 하는 팀이 아무도 아, 어떤 팀도 없기 때문에 감이 안 오더라고요. 이거 두피를 해야 있기나 미스턴 해야 되나 오리사 해야 되나 잘 모르겠어서 저희가 대회 때 느껴보고 좀 바꿔가면서 하자 힘든 사람이 서로 계속 조합을 바꿔가면서 해보자. 그러니까 이렇게 됐던 것 같아요. All right. Um, I mean, it's not only the doofus, but all our teammates are Houston Outlaws. We have a lot of different <coughs> styles uh, that in our toolkit, and we have been playing not only the doofus, but also the Orisa, as you guys have seen. Uh, to be honest, against the London Spitfire, we didn't really know what was the counter composition to the Ryan Rush. So we were thinking, should we go with the Winston Dive or the Doomfist, or should we play something else? So uh, we couldn't come up with a straight answer, so we just figured we'll, st we'll try one style or one style of composition and then uh, fix accordingly and see and see what works um, against that Ryan composition, and that's how uh, things panned out in the end. All right, final question for you, uh, Fearless. Of course, you guys are not in the play-ins, you guys are going straight to playoffs. How confident are you going into the playoffs? 자, 마지막 질문으로 이제 플레이는 안 하셔도 되고 이제 곧바로 어, 다음에 뵐 때는 토론토에서 어, 플레이오프 때 보게 될 텐데 어떻게 지금 토론토에 이제 플레이오프에 들어가면서 좀 어느 정도의 좀 자신감을 가지고 계신가요? 네, 그래도 저희가 괜히 3등이 아니라고 생각을 해서 네, 플레이오프 때더 많이 준비해가지고 진짜 저희의 모든 걸 보여드리도록 하겠습니다. 열심히 준비하고 있어요. All right, uh, we're definitely, you know, we are in the number three seed uh, for a reason. We have we have a lot of things prepared, and we are preparing even harder uh, for the playoffs currently. All right, that is it for the interview. Fearless, thank you so much, and we will see you in Toronto. 자, 그럼 오늘 승리 다시 한번 축하드리면서 토론토에서 뵙도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. Always great to hear it from Fearless, from the Houston Outlaws. They got the 3-2-W, but what a close match that yeah. was against the London Spitfire. Bodes well for the playoffs and the play-ins for everyone watching. And we have one more match happening here, the last match of the regular season. Atlanta Rain will go up against the San Francisco Shock. There is seeding on the line for this one, so both teams want to get the victory. And we actually got to chat with Proper from the San Francisco Shock, who has a lot to say about this match, so let's hear it.